Yeah, the creasters. Um, <laughs> my family, I think, I think my family were creasters until like. Wait, what's a creaster? You only went to church on Christmas and Easter. Oh. I think we were creasters till I was like ten, and then my family was like, "Fuck this, dude." Just over it. Yeah, but th- they put me in uh, Catholic school forever. I was in it until I was eighteen. How was that? Was that like all boys or something? No, it was co-ed. It's at a school called St. Viter High School in Arlington Heights. Where's Arlington Heights? Is that here? Illinois. Illinois, you're ah, you're yeah. a Midwest boy. I am a Midwestern boy. Okay, all right. My mom's from uh, Waukegan. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I'm nice. from Texas. We migrated south, and now we're gone. Were you west? <laughs> how old were you when you when you did the migration? Uh, well, I was born in Texas, so my mom did, like, pre-migration, and then we oh, okay. came to California for me with my career stuff when I was 13, I think, so I'm, like, I'm pretty much half and half. Damn. So, I mean, yeah, you got a little bit of, a little bit of twang in your voice. Every once in a while, I'll go like this, or I'll, yeah. I'll be like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, in the, the back sign. of the throat. Yeah. yeah, I, uh, yeah, the Midwestern twang versus the Southern twang. It's like a, yeah, they call it a drawl. A drawl. And I feel like uh, that word is perfect. It's perfect for, for it. For uh, describing it. It's the, the tall tale sign. Because it's like the you, tip of your tongue, it. the drawl, it like it goes all the way in the back of your tongue. Is that annoying, the ice cubes? Like in the thing? No, I don't care. Also, I like your mix, mixed matched socks. <laughs> yeah. It's such a vibe. Dude. I've got mixed match socks too. Do you? Like nice. these are my pink flames and then my happy face. Oh hell yeah. All day. I, I swear to god I don't have any matching socks anymore. Like they just uh it's like they evaporate. Like Well, they're not cool. Like, matching socks. Matching socks are not cool. Okay. It's funny. <laughs> you got do- the memo. Doing the I've been doing these thrift things on the weekends, you know? What do you mean you know? I no, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess um I I sling my streetwear. Oh, that's right. My streetwear line. The little uh, fairs. What, what are they called? Yeah. The Silver Lake Flea. Fleas, uh, yeah. I do the Lowe's Fleas Flea, the art artists in Fleas in Venice. The only time fleas are, are good. Yeah. <laughs> fleas have a bit, the term has a stigma as if it's like um, just trash. Where did that come from? Flea, does it stand for something? I don't know. Yeah, because, like, that's could, a very questionable name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like people think it's all just stolen shit, you know? Uh-huh. And people are just fencing it off to, right. to some fucker, you know? Like a glorified garage sale. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But the ones I go to, it's pretty sweet. It's mostly, like, vintage, uh, pe- like, re- rehashed vintage wear and stuff. But my my thing is kind of unique in in that, like, it's original stuff. A lot of people are just doing, like, secondhand stuff but it's been good dude but the thing with the thing with um going to like the unmatching socks you see people who are like professional thrifters and all they do is wait like, that's that's an occupation and not no no no. i mean oh shit i needed a, to go to school for that can i swear sorry can i swear yeah i don't give a shit <laughs> i figured with you it yeah didn't matter <laughs> but um yeah you see people wearing like fucking uh like Leather chaps and like mismatched oh uh, gloves and uh-huh. and just like the most rant like they look um, like they fell in like uh, like uh, the bin at Goodwill or something. I love that though. <laughs> Is that the new hipster? Dude, that's just kind of the thrifter. L- I feel like that's the LA vibe that's just kind of perpetuating right now. Mm-hmm. Looking ch- poorer than you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's you know? interesting because anytime I shop at Goodwill, I feel like I find things that actually look expensive. Mm. Like, because I'm such a Goodwiller. I'm such a thrifter. Like, yeah. Salvation Army and Goodwill are, like, my go-tos. Huh. But I always seem to find things. Like, this blazer. This, uh, not blazer. What is this? Yeah, I guess it's a blazer. It's a jacket. A, a jacket. Yeah. It's like a suit jacket. I got this. It's a Keith Mathens, Math Matheson? I don't know. Um... It's apparently made in New Zealand. It's a nice fucking brand. I got it for like five ninety nine at Salvation Army, and I freaking love this thing. But yeah. see, it like it looks. It's a brand. Like it's it's nice. So yeah, you can find hidden gems in all those places. The but di- but now what you're saying is it's about not finding the hidden gems. It's about like just fall like going with the trash look and and looking homeless. 
Yeah, basically. Got it. But the the thing too with these uh, a lot of these thrifter dudes um, that are like the vendors, you know, they'll find stuff for like yeah, like fifteen dollars at Goodwill, and then they mark it up like seventy, eighty dollars. And that's it. That's all they do. That's all they do. They don't like add a patch to it or something. <laughs> no, they don't. Dude. You don't. You think they would like I've, try to? I have a few buddies. The thing is, you have to find like brands. Um, like a, a Burberry, like hidden, like hidden gems are the ones yeah. that you're just like, oh yeah, I'm going to rip some poor kid off next week. Which I feel <laughs> like even like those brands, don't they mark them up a goodwill now? Like haven't they gotten smarter? They, they like yeah, hired they, some people who like know They are marking fashion. it up yeah. more so now. But I think that's, that's the thing with the LA, like they have these flea markets year round. And this is really the only place you can do that in the country. Is that an, an exclusively like... LA or like like California I, thing. I haven't seen um back in Chicago they would have a flea market every Sunday. Um except when it snowed and rain and which winded. Is, you would and- just have <laughs> the year. Uh yeah. <laughs> and so like So there were two flea markets a year. Got yeah. it. <laughs> and I never went. I never even went. Yeah. Because it was just uh like I was saying, mostly just like stolen goods. Yeah. <laughs> My I mean, sister uh is that the ultimate grift right there? Yeah. My my sister the grift, she, thrift? she's a drummer actually. Uh-huh. I think she was like my age and someone broke into her car like I think she was she came back from her show parked out front probably too drunk to unload her car and then while she was sleeping someone broke in and stole all her drums. And then she went to the flea market like 4 days later and found someone <gasps> they were selling, selling her drums. Selling her drums. What? And she and she's like, I know these are my fucking drums. Back the fuck up. I'm taking them right now because oh she's an intimidating God. woman. Yeah, she was. She did a few like uh, a few days ago at the pod, but uh, yeah, the dude just like take them, just fucking take them. Damn. And I and that's just I've done a few swap meets too, which are a disaster. It's basically like Is, what's lo- the difference? It's like a lower class. Okay. L.A. flea market. Is that what the Rose Bowl one is? That one's it? legit. But that's a swap meet technically, right? No, it's, it's, yeah, it's, there's synonyms for sure. But okay. the swap <laughs> meet basically means just cheaper garbage. Okay. Got yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I'm putting my name on everything. No one else is putting their name on shit. Yeah. Because it's all like just secondhand. Thrifted, yeah. yeah. And so like no one's really building a brand necessarily. I like I have something on my face, my eye. Something in my eye. No, you look good. Great. No, okay. When did you start dyeing the fuck out of your hair? Um, my hair died in 2011. Oh yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it's just trashed. No, it's not at all. Actually, I, well, a little bit this year because I I kind of I did a flip flop. I'll tell you that story in a second. But um, in 2011, I had never dyed my hair before ever. I had virgin hair, and I was just like, I'm a very extreme person. It's all mm-hmm. or nothing for me. And so I tried out purple and there was yeah. science behind that decision, by the way. I'm a very like... You were deep in the purple game, I know. No, not at all. This was science. Like, okay, so okay. I have hazel eyes and I wanted them to look more green. Mm. I originally had brown hair and I felt like my brown hair made the brown and like the golden tones in my eyes mm. pop out more. Okay. And so I was like, okay, I want the green to pop out more. And I noticed when I wore purple, my eyes would look greener. So I, I went purple and I was purple for 10 years based on science. Uh, You're basically a scientist. I'm basically a scientist. <laughs> and now I've just flip flopped to green because, again, I'm extreme. And okay. I just want slime on my head, really. So, so you want to get slimed? I want slime, yeah. Yeah, the Nickelodeon era. Have, yes. you, seen, have you seen a video of uh, Katy Perry getting slimed? Mm-mm. <laughs> I would love that, though, because she and I have beef. <laughs> She's like the only celebrity I have beef with, so that'd be great to see. Oh, because she she was your judge. Yeah, no, on American Idol, she was like, no. Oh. She was really hard on me, actually. It's fine. Uh, which, I also apparently say? stole her look. Because, like, on my second audition, because Lionel and... and uh, Lionel Richie. Oh, my God, Luke, um, Brent. So they said yes, but she said no. And so when I did the callbacks, I wore something super outrageous. I was wearing, like, a big black and white, like... Yeah, the, the checkered, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was this whole thing where she was just like, bitch, stole my look kind of thing vibe. And so she retweeted uh, it with a, like a picture next to like her next to mine, like a really similar, well, wow. not really similar, but like checkered outfit. She said that? She did. What a bitch. 
Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. I get it. Like, I'm a threatening woman. I understand. <laughs> like, it's a nah, little dude. intimidating. Fuck her. She doesn't even write her songs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did but you, yeah, so that's the celebrity beef, beef did, that I have. Did you meet any other cool contestants? Like, was there, um, was there any intermingling between the people doing it? Uh, yeah, there was. I did meet a couple cool people. None of us made it, though. All the cool ones didn't make it. Yeah. Uh, because again, we're just threatening, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like it's like, you need, uh, your parents need, can, your parents need cancer. You need to have a terminal illness on your own. <laughs> yes. No, you have to have the sob story for yeah. sure. You have yeah. to have the sob story and it's not about real like artistry. It's yeah. like about having one of those like acrobatic voices. That's like, oh my God, you're doing backflips with your yeah, Just the full Olympic mouth. vocal yeah. cords. Yeah. And so it's like, um, and plus I kind of think it's a joke now. Like from when it moved from Fox or I whatever. don't have a ton of respect for it. Cause I it's know just no one you don't know who anybody is. Like even when you win, yeah. no one even could name anybody from the last like eight years. Well, I just I know how produced it is in that um yeah, like super produced. They like tell you what to say before right. you go on. I'm pretty sure they, they tune people's voices too. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. For like the for like the final broadcast. Oh. They fix People, or make it worse. That's possible yeah, too. Yeah, people that they want. Oh, I hadn't heard that. To be perceived better. Some contestant was talking about how it was like they were basically making up stories for him to talk about in front of the camera, even. Yep, yep. That were irrelevant to his life. Yeah, but, no, they but, coach you. Yeah. But would clearly do well on the camera. So I think my whole thing was stage two because with my audition, they told me, like right before I went for my first audition, they were like, be sure to say how much you like Katie and how much she's inspired you and all this stuff. Uh, because I think they had it planned yeah. that she was going to be the only one that said no. And so it was like, mm-hmm. it was going to be heartbreaking for me because I'm her number one fan, you know? <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. That's what they were trying to do. But then no, they didn't even air that. You should have went out there hard out of the gates and be like, I fucking hate you, Katie. <laughs> I could just, have. I could have and just made a whole scene. That would have been great television. I might have actually got, that audition might have actually gotten aired. That, I bet you would have. Yeah. But my second one did, I don't, I guess, because of the outfit beef. And Lionel Richie, what a dated judge to have on there. Well, he's, he's now doing a residency in Vegas. Is like, he? He's, he's top dog in it. Wow. Who's the other one? Luke Bryan, the country guy. Oh, yeah. Is that? Wait, who's dating Gwen Stefani? Oh, no, that's um, uh, uh, The Voice. Um, oh, yeah, The Shelton, Voice. Shelton, Blake Shelton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. Dude, all I mean, those shows are made for the judges. It's PR for the judges. Yeah. Because you never, yeah, you never hear about the people who fucking win. Uh, I can't imagine how bad those contracts are when you would do win, are there? Oh, they're, they're terrible. Just atrocious. Oh, they're terrible. You, you don't want to win. In fact, the best situation. Second place. Second place. Yeah. Don't get the contract, but you get all that airtime, which even then, I, I just don't think it's the same amount of exposure as it was when it was, you know, no, Kelly yeah. Clarkson Early days, 2000s for sure. Daughtry time. Like, well, they canceled it. They, they canceled can- it. And they brought it back. And then they switched networks. And 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 since then, they, they've produced it differently. So, do you, do you watch The Voice at all? No, but my mentor of a very long time is one of the coaches for that show. And she knows all about it. And Miley's a judge on that one, right? I don't know. Or she was? I have no fucking clue. I know Charlie Puth was going to be like a judge on one of them too. I, mm. You know what? I actually think he was going to be Lionel's, Lionel Richie's uh, replacement seat. That would probably do better for the ratings. Charlie's great. Yeah, those shows just irk me, man. They, they well, rub, why, why does it bother you? They rub me the wrong way in that, uh, I don't know, they kind of make it seem like, yeah, you need you need one specific type of voice to be a successful musician. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with voice. I mean, a little bit. Like, you have to have a cool voice. But, like, yeah. it's way more about writing and production. Right. And artistry. How many people who have been contestants on it and have been just shot down basically just had their their self-esteem destroyed by these who could have been their idols, you know? Yeah. It's an island. I really see those shows in, as islands. Like, there has nothing to do with the industry. Yeah. And anymore, at least. Like, I think maybe before, you totally. know, Kelly Clarkson era, like, it, you could have actually done something in the real world. But mm-hmm. 
the industry has just changed so much and like network tv cable television is just like that's not where people blow up anymore who's watching that i don't know i don't have tv i yeah. haven't had cable in like five years no i haven't had cable in 10 years yeah <laughs> you know? no it's all about the tubes I feel like well, it's not, not even about tubes. It, it's now like TikTok. Yeah, dude. If you want to be relevant, you gotta be on TikTok. I know, and uh, I hate we hate that. I hate transitioning into talking about TikTok. We don't have to talk about TikTok at all. In fact, I'd prefer if we don't. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> I because we're gonna get in a bad mood, and yeah. this whole thing's just gonna go downhill yeah. really quickly. So let's not. I mean, you th- you're thinking about modern attention spans, it's just everyone's attention span is shot. Partly from, yeah, the social media. Uh, I was thinking about kids who just went back to school from two years of curricu- of of in-home curriculum, you know? Yeah. Dude, I imagine if I was, if I was in that situation, um, like I was 16, 17, just at home, I would not have learned anything for two years. <laughs> I would have just been fucking, you know how like you're on the Zoom meeting in class or whatever. I'd be fucking playing video games or jerking off in the corner of the room or putting like a, you know, when people put like a, like a a a cardboard cutout. Dude, you're (laughs) literally saying, did you watch the, uh, the COVID special South Park episode? (laughs) Cartman literally does what you just said. So your spirit animal is Cartman. Okay. Now I know who you are. (laughs) This is all I need to know. Cause like your creative like intuition just did a Cartman right now. Well, it's just. The teachers don't give. Do you a f- watch the show? Yeah, I love South Park. Like he literally does I that. He takes the cutout. He's like glitching, that. and then he puts a, cl- a cutout. I don't remember that. But I probably have seen. I've seen it. It's so good. Um, I I just watched it the other day. It was so no, good. I, I've I grew up on that show. Going back to school, I imagine everyone is just like, they're they can't focus on any class. I would imagine. Well, yeah, everybody has ADHD now or whatever. Yeah, it's just been yeah. Uh, bred into a whole generation of kids. Do you believe in ADHD? Do you think that's a thing? Um, Like that everybody has it now all of a sudden? Do you think that that's like legit? <laughs> well, I think you can be conditioned into behaving a certain way. And I think some people, I mean, we're all born with different chemical makeups, you know? Mm-hmm. Like when you're, I, I hate the idea of, throwing some eight-year-old kid on Ritalin or some other thing like he's a fucking kid you know let him develop he has energy you know put him into shit to expend his energy yeah um why do you feel like you have ADHD well I I definitely I got diagnosed er, like (laughs) early on okay didn't get on medication until my early 20s when it started destroying my life and I'm (laughs) I'm like better yeah on on medication but like how are you destroying your life uh, uh, I, I really couldn't regulate my mental and emotional states. Mm. I was like all over the fucking place. And sure. Part of that is like trying to adjust to adulting from being a teen that was yeah. just like creative and sure. wanting to make stuff. And I just wanted to keep making stuff, but then like a career and having to make money and all of that was very stressful for me. Mm. And just as that was beginning to have, like, I was having to integrate that aspect of life, everything just went really downhill. And I think it was trauma. I honestly think ADHD is, like, trauma-induced. Like, what you're talking about, like, there's this conditioning, there's this expectation, there's this way that you have to act in society. And if you don't, you're bad. And the truth is, is most of us don't fit in that fucking box of what society wants us to act like. And so we're constantly being told we're bad. Mm. And so I think that does a number to your brain psychologically yeah. where you're like, oh, shit, who I really am is is never validated. It's not good. It's not what people want to see from me. So I'm going to shove that down. And that shoving, I think, is what starts dysregulating everything and creating like confusion and turmoil and anxiety. Mm. That's just my like hypothesis based on like personal experience. Yeah. Well, you're a scientist. I'm a scientist. <laughs> like we said, colors, brains, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of people don't uh I think a lot of people don't know what the fuck they're doing in life in general. And society makes it seem like you gotta figure this out at seventeen because you're gonna pick a major or uh 
There's pressure. There's a lot of pressure around totally. when you're a kid. I I love the idea of uh, gap years. Mm. Like coming coming out of high school, I think a gap year should be mandatory. Like to go travel or something. Travel, even just work. Mm. You know, um, just try different shit uh, instead of just being memorizing shit for some standardized testing or whatever, you know? Well, I think I had a, a gap decade at this point. Uh, <laughs> just, like, oh, trying yeah. to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. That's good, though. I mean, the 20s, your 20s are supposed to be for that, I think. And They're supposed to be a mess? Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's what I hear. I'm just regurgitating that notion. Yeah. But it I, does just make both of us feel better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, is uh, is doing a podcast a good idea? Probably not. But I'm doing it. But fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Go, bro. Like, yeah, dude. honestly, when I see people doing like a bunch of random shit and then like sometimes they follow through with it and sometimes they don't, I'm like, mm -hmm. honestly, I appreciate that more yeah. than not doing it because yeah. like, why not? Like, it's just I'm at that point. Right. I think that's what the 30s motto is. Why not? Just right. why not? Well, how many people uh, they, they lock into some career in their early 20s out of college or high school? And then it's like ten years down the line, they're like, "Well, I fucking hate my shit. I wish I, I wish I at least tried to pursue some type of passion or dream." And then your passions or dreams are allocated to an an hour long hobby that you dedicate maybe once or twice a week, and then it's it's just it just becomes irrelevant in your life, you know? Like you never become an amazing painter because you you're fucking spent at the end of a work day or god forbid you have kids and then you're fucking drained constantly yeah and I, yeah just having for me i've always been like i mean no one no one was hiring me no one no one wants to hire me for anything <laughs> so i've always been forced to fucking uh like entrepreneur that shit yeah yeah my entire life and it's kind of made me who i am but um what do you think the solution is because like it's it's tough like not everybody's creative. Like like my brother, he's right. six years younger than me. And he's like a computer science guy and right. like working for Amazon, making 200K his first year out of college. Like good for fucking him. Smart yeah. ass fucking kid. Loves math. Loves coding. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Great. Not me. Not me. <laughs> and not a lot of people. So like there's that those there's those people, but yeah. then there's not those people. Uh -huh. What 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 do we do for those not people? Because there doesn't <laughs> seem to be solid careers in creative pursuits most creative pursuits are more entrepreneurial style to begin with which yeah. is much riskier and second of all even when you do find something like let's say you're the best bass player on the planet and you get hired to go on tour for something or you're a videographer and you get you know 5k a music video all of those things freelancing mm -hmm. it's inconsistent you're always wondering when is your next gig going to come in so that's yeah. not a great solution either yeah i don't no, if there is, we're just fucked. Great, awesome. Yeah. We're all <laughs> fucked, um, and we can stop the podcast. Uh, Have a great one. Bye. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, Did you see this? Look, my shit got ripped. From what? Probably doing this too many times. Just getting ripped. You lifting some fist, weights? Fist bumping. I don't know. It just. <laughs> I just noticed a. Am I? It, oh, am I doing the trashy hipster? Thrifter thing? Yeah, the the ribs are in, dude. The ripster. Yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, what what the fuck are we talking about? Oh, figuring out life and how we suck at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no. I think when you're pursuing something creative, first of all, it takes years to become good enough that people would want to pay you for it. But I think you also have to figure out a very specific business plan and income influx that is tailored to you because no one has the same skill set as you. No one has the same gear as you. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of figuring it out uh, one year after another because it's... But that that's the thing. You can only really get, get really deep into a creative career by being poor for a very long time, not making a lot of money for a very long time. And that's just that's just the fact of the matter. Like people who expect um, coming out of college to immediately get a job in coding probably can. 
Right. Because there's an endless <laughs> amount of those jobs. Yeah. Um, and then you can just climb the ladder for the rest of your life and just make an extra 40K every year or whatever. But you can't do that if you're um, a singer. Maybe if you're, if you want to go teach. You know, that's an interesting point. Because, yes, there is definitely an element of skill level yeah. and having that increase. Because, like, I I sucked. I, I used to really suck. Same. And, like, suck. And so <laughs> I was okay, but I, I wasn't good. And so it took a long, it takes a long time mm -hmm. to get really good. It's kind of like and, comedy. Like, you need a decade in it to get good. Yeah. And sucking is also subjective. Like That's you, what I, that's exactly where I was going. Yeah. It's a subjective thing. Art is subjective. It's not like putting in code and it works. Right. There is no, like, yeah. check mark green light. It's all subjective. And so that's why it's hard to quantify into a career that makes mm -hmm. consistent amount of money. I've talked about this before, but uh, records are irrelevant in their own way um, in terms of making money from them. Show, live shows, there is still, you know, there, there will always be live shows, but it's not like, Hey, let's let's go out and let's go to this venue. I don't know who the fuck's playing, but let's fucking go there. It's like people go for the person that they're following. I've noticed that too. And it's just people aren't as spontaneous as they used to because they have so much more entertainment at home. I definitely feel more like you do where I, I feel like the show's kind of died a little bit and it isn't that spontaneous. Just go see who's playing. It's oh, this is the band that's coming in town that I want to go see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's always existed too. Like, yeah, I, we're going to fucking see Led Zeppelin next week. You know, like. Wait, but, are you for real? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Uh, like, I was like, shit. <laughs> they don't, I don't think they exist. That I was going to say. <laughs> but like. You got uh, my hopes up. That would be pretty rad. That'd be insane. Yeah, when, when Facebook or MySpace showed up, it was kind of the first time you could find an artist not through MTV or not through a show, a radio show or a radio. Yeah. Or, or live. Yeah. And, and the other avenues of finding music now are pretty much, yeah. Like fucking TikTok just for, it's the, all online now. It's yeah. all online yeah. and not, not just TikTok, but I don't know. It's just kind of killed. It's made me, romanticize music a lot less than when I was younger. Hmm. The world around music has changed so much than when I first got into it. I still love music and I'll always do it. And I, I'm trying to play a lot more shows this year now that I have an actual set. But yeah, there's the live shit is all I really care about. Reading people in real life is what I've kind of realized. The only thing that is worthwhile even with, like, the clothing thing I've been doing, I've been doing, you know, online sales and shit. But I don't know. When you're not seeing the person buying it from you and you're just sending it off into, into the post office, mm -hmm. not seeing a face, it's not as rewarding as, as doing a, a storefront or pop-up type thing where you get to converse with someone and see a face and it's the same thing with music like if you're strictly making music online digitally um it's not gonna be as rewarding as if you actually got on a stage and make that connection with other people and impress other people and 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 talk to them after the show i just i'm just becoming so digitally burnt out and I think that's partly growing up with the digital shit that I'm, I'm just need to reconnect with the real world. Is that, the, is that why you made this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> For real though. To see a real fucking person. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been a great excuse. <laughs> it's been really nice to, um, that's great. Having, I love that for you. having friends and artists come in every single day and, and just talk to them, you know, like people don't sit down and just talk anymore for yeah. three hours without being distracted by a phone or a, an alert yeah you know and it's nice yeah it's, it's really nice i love that for you yeah dude. And i love that for me it's a, that's my reality today now too yeah exactly so that, so that's good did you uh see 
So you had a little podcast uh, I o- did. over the COVID. How did that go? Yeah. And honestly, this week you like made my, because you told me about this, you made my head start thinking like, hmm, maybe I should like restart that up again. Um, yeah. I came back. So I was like on tour. Yeah. During 2020 and mm-hmm. mid-March. I was supposed to do the whole world. I got to fucking Texas. And so March 13th, whatever, I'm flying Wait, back you, home. you were in Texas for COVID? Well, that's when, no, I I was on tour and I did half of the United States and then everything shut down and I had to fly back home. Oh. Uh. So March, I come back home and I'm like on that plane and I'm like, shit, I'm not touring the world this year, am I? And so I was like, okay, I got to come up with another game plan. So I went really hardcore with the digital stuff, you know, because yeah. I wasn't burnt out. Right. In fact, I was kind of like. I there's, can live without the shows for a minute. But that was a lot. There's you know? nothing else to do. Yeah. Like I, I want to go on. I, I started streaming all the time. I was doing like 12 hour streams on Twitch, which is Damn. bonkers. And then I was like posting stuff on YouTube. And then that's when I started my podcast too, which is called Boss Pod. And I had like artists just like this, like on and we would talk. I had v- videographers, photographers, pr- music producers, some of the best like musicians that play for amazing people and had so many cool like stories and like insight on the industry to, to tell. And yeah. I enjoyed having those conversations, but because it was COVID, it was all remote. It was all digital still. Zoomy. And that's why I was like, ah, oh, shit. Like if I started something up again, like, you know, now I could do it in person. Yeah. Um, that's a beautiful thing about being an artist. You go yeah. through your phases. You get to go do different stuff, you know? Right. And that, yeah. And that's why I got into music because there's so many different creative outlets that can kind of f- orbit around that, you mm-hmm. know? I think that's one of the things, too, with with artists where they, they get locked into one specific artistic, like, discipline. Mm. And... And they feel like they need to outsource everything to, yeah, to a producer or or to an engineer because they their stuff might not compare to people who are spending 20 grand on, like, a mix or some shit. And it's, I don't know who the fuck's doing that anymore besides the labels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, they better not be charging independent artists that rate. I'm going to be pissed. Dude, no. I, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, people... Um, People feel like uh, they can't release anything because the song has to be a certain amount of money pumped into it with the mix expenditure, the master, the promo, the music video. Like if you're constantly waiting to release shit until it's like perfect, you're never going to come out with anything or your output's going to be so slow. No one's going to care because there's just so much time between you coming out with shit. And I I think... uh, I think if you can just flood the world with your with your art, what whatever that may be, instead of dwelling on the on push, the yeah, the final push or yeah. the final result every time. You know, there there's an interesting contradiction here because, and and, and not to call you out because there really is no right answer. It's sure. just a paradoxical world that we live in and especially (laughs) with music and subjective art it gets complicated really quick yeah but there's an interesting contradiction here because as cool as as it is to have the accessibility of just being able to release art in more of like a quantity sure over quality kind of manner in a more real raw kind of artist to fan way there's also the element where you were talking about before that it it is sad because the things that we love and grew up with with artists how they put out their art before the whole sizzle and excitement and like special moment of when mm-hmm. a piece is out that has kind of died because of that exact thing yeah. so it's a contradiction because yeah we get more art but at the same time it's not as special in like right. on this like stage like it used to be where you dilute your portfolio or not even not even that the art isn't as good or as bad but like the whole three days until the thing and then it's like at midnight Mm. like you know because our our era you know of artists that we love it was always like a hype to the release yeah 
And although that's annoying as an artist to have to do, that is kind of what gave the the new album a sizzle when someone will put it out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. Like, um, I think about, again, this is such a different industry, but, um, like, like, the Beatles, dude, they would release songs that were so bad, like, on their album, and there would be, like, five good songs, like, the White Album. Mm. It had a lot of hits, yeah. but there was just as many just terrible, pointless compositions that they put on there just because they felt like it. And mm. and they deemed they deemed valuable enough to put it on the track list. And I, I think that, um, yeah, this song isn't a hit or this song... The song may not go anywhere, but I, I put effort into it. I put time. Let's just put it out there just to have it out there for myself even. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of grew up thinking like my parents were sick growing up. They passed away when I was like 20. And, and there was like uh, I kind of grew up just always thinking about like you only got so many minutes on this planet. And and such a human thing to think about uh, your legacy, what you leave behind, you know. But I think, yeah, like if I died tomorrow, I'd be pretty happy with the shit I've put out, the shit I've done so far. Nothing's been massively successful, but I'm leaving a lot in my wake. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, how many artists like uh, like Jeff Buckley, you know? I don't know who that is. He was, yeah, exactly. No one really knows who he Sorry. is. But he has a, like, Wish you know you know that song, Hallelujah? Oh, yeah. Is that him? His recording of it is one oh, of okay. the most popular recordings of it. Mm -hmm. That recording basically, like, blew him the fuck up and then he died. Or uh, Jim Croce is one of my favorite artists in the 70s. I have a question. Yeah. To that? Uh-huh. Did it blow up before he died or right after he died? I think right before he died. Because I do notice a trend where... Artists die and all of a sudden now they're legends. Yeah. But when yeah, they're yeah. alive, they're like nothing. No one gives a shit. Yeah. I. That's so rude. That's a f <laughs> that's a fair assessment. Like um, that is rude as fuck. Or like um, Sublime, the singer for Sublime, passed away like right when their album blew up. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, another artist, Jim Croce, who's a fucking amazing folk rock guitarist in the 70s dude he wrote like like a massive album like 1972 it blew up he got in a plane plane crashed like a year after he fucking blew up hmm. and uh it's just like shit like that it makes you think like life is short man just just put out what you can man yeah there's a, a quote by gandhi okay. and he says Something to this. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but anything, everything you do, or okay, I know what it is. Whatever you do will be insignificant, mm -hmm. but it's important that you do it because no one else will. Mm. And that really hit me and, like, in a way, kind of took this weight off my shoulder because I've always felt this responsibility, like you. Like, I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave a mark. I want to do something different. I want to put out into the world who I am. I have a mission. I have something to say. And I'm an artist for the artist. I care about artists and I, I want to do something that will inspire others. Um, but I've also felt a weight because of that. That yeah. time ticking, that clock ticking. And it's like, it's never enough. I have to do more. Blah, blah, blah. And then there's this pressure on me. And then I start to choke mm. or burn out or whatever the fuck. And there's just too much pressure. And this quote made me realize that I don't know if whatever you believe in the universe, but I kind of am starting to believe that everything already all is and whatever I do in my life is exactly what it was supposed to be and that there really is no rush. I just need to like keep on chucking along and like do what I can because at the end of the day, I am important and also insignificant at the same time. And I just have to like kind of be okay with my mm -hmm. art being in the same manner that it's like, it's, it's important that I do it because only I can, yeah. but at the same time, like the impact that it has on the world, I have no control of. Totally, man. I, 
like uh, yeah time time is a funny thing to like the music industry is a unique industry that for some reason um it's become such an ageist industry oh yeah you know it's like if you aren't fucking 20 and beautiful then you're fucked or something and i don't believe in that um does it help yes um but see that's like the puppet like getting signed as a puppet singing other people's songs real yeah. artists it, yeah, yeah. they're in their late 20s they or do late it, 30s. they do it for like, they do it forever yes they never stop yeah um when you're looking at like a fucking star mm-hmm. or uh yeah like a picture of a fucking like galaxy or something oh like space not space. hollywood stars great yeah. awesome i'm glad i yeah. like the direction of this more <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. i know you're, you're a space gal uh like you're looking at like a something, like if someone was looking at Earth from however many light years away, we never existed to them. You know, they're looking at something millions of years old, and they're looking at a past that um, they may never see. There's just an irrelevance to so much of what we're doing, and we put so much pressure on it. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, like, do you do you even know your your great great grandparents' names? No, no, no one fucking does, dude. You're, <laughs> do we care? I don't know. <laughs> I, like, like, I mean, we're in a unique position with having our whole lives documented now. Yeah. But yeah, like three, you're you're dust after three generations, dude. Yeah. Even um, Elvis is like the one of the oldest. Like Mozart, maybe is the oldest musician I can think of. That is somehow still relevant. Mm-hmm. I can't. Th- I can't really tell you anyone past sixteen hundred. You know, yeah. uh, clearly a different world. But well, uh, I mean, the technological age has something to do with why yeah. things become more memorable because it's more documented, right? But I mean, I've heard conspiracy theories that it's like, I think it's four or five generations go by and then they just wipe everybody clean and we start over and like there really is no history. I mean, I know it's bullshit, but like it is funny to like mind like, experiment. Like men in black? Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. that that would make sense. Um, <laughs> but there is something to be said about like playing these mind games on like what time is because when you think about it, yeah, it's an unsolvable puzzle. Mm. This whole thing, it's like I almost feel like it's so fucked up. Like, if there's a God, he's fucking twisted. He's got a fucked up sense of humor because he coded in us to be curious and to, like, want to understand and to explore and have this, like, wanting to figure out who we are and all this, like, curiosity. Like, monkeys don't go around trying to figure out the meaning of the universe. Like, why do we have to fucking have that? Yet, the universe has another code that blocks us from knowing that exact answer. Mm. Like... That's some fucked up shit. It's like we're just running around chasing for answers that we are blocked from. Do you believe in God? I believe there is a higher power, yeah. Mm. I just don't like that word necessarily. Like a, like a, a flying spaghetti monster? Yeah, like a source. <laughs> like a source. Oh, okay. Like, like, like we all came from a dimension of oneness, allness, and love and light. Mm. And then we were like removed from that. And we're like these little separate little pieces of that, that forgot that we were from there so that Mm. we can like experience ourselves for the first time. Are you a Scientologist? Is that what that is? (laughs) Oh shit. Is that what that is? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, you're like scaring (laughs) me. I'm not a Scientologist, but if that's, is that Scientology? I don't even fucking know what they believe. Dude. (laughs) It's like uh, I thought they believed in a science, writer. Yeah, it's some science fiction bullshit. Yeah, but yeah, I've, I've. Uh, so does that mean you're a Scientologist? Tell <laughs> yeah. me. That's that's the headline on this. Yeah. <laughs> she knows a Scientologist. <laughs> yeah, I just don't bother myself thinking about it. I've just uh, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> kind of. I really just don't. It's pointless. I have no reason to believe in it. Uh, it doesn't yeah. like some people have that hole in their heart that needs to be filled by mm-hmm. some religion or God or community like that. I don't have that. Mm. I just plus I don't want to believe in a God who fucking like gives cancer to kids and shit. You mm. know? Like I'm not giving him the time of day. Yeah, no, that's not that's not where my head's at either. Because <laughs> I, I think I think we we live in a universe of light and dark. 
We live in mm -hmm. a polarity. We live in contradiction. This universe is both. It's yeah. both good and bad, a.k.a. I think it's neutral. The, the truth is uh -huh. neutrality. Yeah. It just is. And we're just like so deep when you actually meditate on that concept. Sure. But it, it sounds so cliche when I say it out loud right now. But <laughs> um, like when you kind of, instead of grappling with it, just like being at peace. Yeah. There's no, there's no one you need to give your power away to. All yeah. the power we have is right here, right now. Dude, we should be smoking some pot right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, I feel it. The stoner vibes, for sure. <laughs> Do, yeah, like, um, I always think about, too, like, uh, the just the love stories that happen. Like, your parents hopefully loved each other. Their parents hopefully loved each other. Do you, do you, um... Do you think I'll ever find love? No. <laughs> are we now fucked yes yeah. well we're all fucked we all established that already are or you, we're not lack they're all fucked yeah. uh, actually are you, are you in a relationship no i'm not no no it's what? tough out there it's yeah. tough on these streets yeah, freddie yeah. are you when was your last uh romantic relationship um i dated one guy from hinge like a couple months ago and emotionally unavailable the typical story yeah um, Classic. I know. I do, I sound like such an LA girl. He's so much me unavailable. <laughs> um, it, it's tough. Uh, it is, and it's like for me, it's become like not a priority. But at the same time, how are we supposed to have families and like continue our not like professional legacy, but personal legacy of like human beings someday, or a family, or like I, I don't know what you believe in, but I feel like that's for me as a woman, I have a very maternal instinct. I would, I would love to have kids someday. Mm. And the only thing stopping me from that is I have no one to have said kid wish. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's a, that's know. a problem. It's a problem. You yeah. could go, uh, I know I, I've thought I, about it. I don't know if I want to be a single mom. <laughs> Freddie, I don't know if I want to be a single mom. <laughs> I've, uh, I've looked into, uh, donating to one of those banks, you know, uh -huh. and they, they, they stopped calling me. I they called me to get all my info and they never responded. So they didn't want your seed. They, they, they weren't interested. <laughs> Dude, uh, that's so sad. I'm like, all right. Fuck. I just wanted a quick buck, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how much do you get? Dude, you get to like 200, 300 bucks. Oh, that's it. I mean, yeah. for a jerk off, I guess that's not bad. For a quick wank. I think for women. Eggs are more. Oh, yeah. Isn't it like five grand yeah. or something? I don't even know. I would imagine. Uh, I don't even know. Like, yeah. I know some some gals who are who freeze their eggs, mm. you know, because they're getting older. But they same thing. They don't have. Talk like, to me in six months. Yeah. might be me. I, <laughs> yeah. I'll have a whole story, I'm sure. <laughs> I, could, I could get you some numbers. <laughs> yeah, the freezing the eggs thing. I wonder how that affects the kid. Is it totally? Does it do anything? That's a great question. I've never looked into that. My assumption is at certain temperatures, things are preserved as if yeah. nothing ever happened. They just have poor circulation when they, they grow up. Yeah, they just might be a little... Yeah, a little chilly. A little chilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't or, know how that works. Yeah, those those little booths at the sperm bank, I'd imagine, are very sad little, little rooms. Little sticky, humid just places. Stick, oh. <laughs> There's Wait, you have to do it at a booth. You can't just like take the cup, go home, and then like put it in a mailbox no, or something. Oh, dude, there's no way that would preserve it at all. Oh, so because they need it right away. Yeah, yeah. So they freeze the sperm. Yeah, I just come with a bucket. Uh, <laughs> I've been collecting this for three months. Here you go. Can we like weigh this? <laughs> I just got like the chum bucket, like oh. the SpongeBob, like you know oh. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that called? <laughs> yeah, the chum bucket. Is that's what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you grow up watching cartoons? Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. SpongeBob is one of my favorites. In fact, I'm sitting on a couple albums, but one of the albums that I'm sitting on, um, I had this whole, like, master genius plan with my videography creative team to make a music video for each song that is based on a SpongeBob episode, but mm. don't tell anybody that that's what the premise is. I still want to do that. Because I'm telling you, like, episode? Spongebob, no, all of them. Like, all of like them. They're not all Spongebob episodes, but every song would have a different Spongebob episode, oh. like, premise. 
And then you get sued by fucking Nickelodeon. You can't steal a premise. <laughs> you can't steal a premise. I mean, it's all derivative. I guess so, yeah. yeah. And isn't it true, like, um, good artists steal, great artists <laughs> steal better or something? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stealing in the art world is a funny thing because it's... Uh, Every industry has their own way of stealing from past artists. Because cause when you're in a genre, you're borrowing from influences that were in that genre. Like, I'm not stealing licks from Slayer, you know. Right. But Note for note in the rhythm, no. Yeah, yeah, that's just not my influencer genre. But there could be, yeah, there could be Beatles songs of progressions that... Yeah, you can't copyright a progression. Subconsciously stealing from. or uh, Oh, that's hard. I always really worry about that when I write a song. I'm like, yeah. oh, shit. Like, did I accidentally yeah. write that song? I think that happens. Yeah. That's going to keep happening. It's, it's scary, but, like, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Everything's already been done, so you just have to, like, do it different. Uh-huh. I don't know. Or um, I'm not a mathologist, a mus- musicologist or whatever it is. Yeah. Like like Ed Sheeran getting sued by some, I think he got sued by Marvin Gaye's estate because uh, uh, I think Thinking of You, like one of his or biggest- Or Thinking Out Loud. Thinking Out Loud. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. I think that, that song Oof. was the exact same BPM and like rhythm section as a Marvin Gaye song. Okay, but how generic is the Marvin Gaye song because- <laughs> Hey guys, you made it this far. Some some quick, shameless self-promotion. I'm giving you a free coupon to my store on freddytylerpaul.com. You can get any tea, any sweater, any book, any album of mine for 25% off. Just put in bad advice at checkout and you're golden. All right, back to the pod. Wait, so we got off topic. Do you want kids? I'll let you answer. <laughs> the audience wants to know. This is a question from Skylar Girl two seven five from Twitter, and she says, "Do you want a sugar mama?" <laughs> I would love a sugar mama. I've talked about this before. Uh, okay, well you don't have to say it again, but I'd like to know. I would love, yeah, sugar mama. <laughs> hit me up if you're out there. Uh, I do want kids. Oh wow! I'm surprised to hear that answer. I not anytime soon. Yeah. Okay. Like ten. Okay, years. so you want to be like the the. I want to the- be the- old man like, yeah really pushing it to the last what's minute. the playboy guy he- hugh. hugh hefner yes you want to be a hef the first uh the first two gals uh that i had on the pod one of them's a playboy bunny seriously and she's we were just talking about wait was she sitting like right here <laughs> right there oh it was a little damp over there that's why yeah. I sat here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's still damp i know i, wa- I washed that couch down okay oh uh, too bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah kids um it's just when you have kids your entire future is derailed yeah. And fucked. It's kind of part of the legacy, though, right? Yeah. It's good. I mean, you're going to die. Yeah. Someone's got to inherit your uh, your studio your shit. Your cool shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get all the fatties? I'm not letting the state <laughs> take my synths. No. Better not. No. Um, if you need someone on the will. No <laughs> yeah. You're the backup okay. inheritor. <laughs> so you were uh, you were dating some... some some, yeah, some poor sap off hinge. Poor sap. Uh, yeah, he did, was. Did you at least get laid? Or I not... did really great sex. Nice. That was the only good thing about it. Hell yeah. Um, to be honest, because I did not feel like myself around him. Oh, yeah. Something about being around him, I felt like, like I couldn't even like talk or like be yeah. myself. Like uh-huh. I turned into this like little minkish little baby girl, you know, like <laughs> fucking blow my brains out. Yeah. Um, like when certain people bring certain sides out, out of me, like it, that's a tell. Sure. That's like telling me something about them. That I'm feeling like I have to compensate and change myself for. And you never over overcame that at any point. No. And like I would leave and be like, who the fuck was just like, who was I? And then I'd yeah. be like, okay, next time I'm really going to be myself. And yeah. then I never was. Like I'd get a little better, but uh-huh. I just was never comfortable with him. Damn. I what, just felt really what, like. What was like, he doing? I don't know. It was just like he, he's a, he's like a video guy. He, he's like a director, videographer, whatever. And like really cool guy and we like had a lot in common and like how we see the world and he, he wanted a family and all this good stuff um but just emotionally he was so cut off and so I guess I kind of felt that and yeah. felt like okay well if I show my emotions and like express myself fully like maybe you know that's too much for him yeah. you know just like I felt like I'd be too much and I I'm get- a lot I'm a lot you're a lot <laughs> 
What, possibly too much. You know what? It can never be too much of a good thing. Baby. <laughs> I'm just Josh, and I but know. yeah, like uh, yeah, the hinge thing. It's tough out there. It's tough out there because it's one of the things with dating apps, and I don't, I don't totally believe this, but <laughs> it's like the people of a lot of maybe worth are snatched up quickly. Mm. You know. Because they're not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, especially as you get two older. Two, they're not there, so they <laughs> must have been snatched up quick. Got it. Yeah, you're either snatched up quickly or you weren't there in the first yes, place. Yes, yeah. Because um, especially when you get older, it's like people... Find their person already, yeah, I and guess. They, and yeah. they lock it in. Yeah. Um, and then they divorce in 10 years when you don't like them anymore. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. find them. And then, um, and then you're back on. And then you have to date in your 40s. Oh, fuck. I feel bad for anyone who has to do that. Yeah, I know although, one of my good friends is doing that right now, and it sucks. Although, if you're 40, hopefully you got your shit together, and it's just... Yeah, no, it's, no shits are together. Oh, no. When when you're still single at that age, oh, like... Oh, I thought you were talking about your friend. Oh, well, that's you a little bit. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Damn. But it's it's like you. It feels like if you're not if you're not married or like in a serious relationship by 40, I feel like you're just kind of perpetuating your 30s mm. and it just kind of stays in that zone of like yeah. singlehood in the workforce like trying to figure shit out like i think it's not until you like lock it down that there's change well Cause even like progressions in career like a promotion or whatever that's not really going to change your life that much you know yeah well i i hope if you hit that age you at least have a series of relationships in your wake to learn from to figure out oh yeah who the fuck? That is the literal terminology my mom has been calling me out on. She's <laughs> like, honey, when are you going to like stop learning from relationships and actually find one that like uh, is good for you? And I'm like, I learned so much. Blah, blah, blah. I always like make these justifications of like why a relationship was in my life or whatever. Uh -huh. She's like, when are you just going to find the one that like isn't a lesson and like you get to actually enjoy it? That's tough. You know, you <laughs> I like the hard way. <laughs> it's not It's not like they just fall on your lap. No, it is. It's tough. And, uh, you know, p you hear people, like, settle. You, they settle with someone. Um, like, people who... You ever see, like, someone, some really ugly guy with some beautiful woman? And you're like, damn, how did he... <laughs> that was almost me, like, ten times. <laughs> yeah. That was literally almost me. I could never do the whole settling thing because, like... <laughs> Fuck. I'm I'm literally gonna end up alone forever <laughs> before I'd end up settling. Cause like yeah. I, I just there's it's, the spark has to be there. There has to be a spark and, and it, it sucks. And there has to be a, a really a real equal level of respect. Like when someone is Okay, but that can be in something that, that is like because I, I thought you were talking about like dating below like dating Visually, yeah, yeah, cosmetically is is a funny a funny aspect, which I mean, sucks. I mean, that I we love, have to be like that. Love can overcome that for sure. I don't think it can. I think I you're either know. attracted to them or not. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've had so many friends yeah. try to turn boyfriends with me, and it's just like I'm just not into you that way. And yeah. it's sad. Like I want to be into them that way. They're fucking the dopest dudes. I just don't uh -huh. like them physically. How much does that suck? How much does that suck? Mm. I wish. I wish that wasn't a thing Yeah. because I'm not a vain person. I don't give a shit about body and like all that stuff. Like I am such a person based person, but like nah, dude. when it comes we, to sex, you have all, to. No, we all care about like it. body. We're like there's a reason you're swiping left or right on a photo. Okay. But see, then that makes it only about that. Right, and that's right, a problem right. too. That That's its own problem. But, but yeah, I agree. But when you, when you interact with anyone, like when you, when you start to pursue anyone, it's all visual attraction. Yeah. Or maybe you hear their fucking voice and they have a beautiful voice or something. Or you just, but, you know, there's that X factor thing where it's like, oh, he kind of reminds me of my dad. So I, I want what's <laughs> bad for me. So yeah. I'm going to go for him. Yeah. If you got there's definitely daddy that. or mommy issues, you know, um, that plays a factor for sure. I think that's the thing, like a scientific thing. You want to go back to science? I'm your science <laughs> yeah. guest, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I brought you on. So, I mean, there have been studies done. Um, I don't know what. Like it, the woman has to look like your mom a little bit or something. Um. I mean, I, I guess that in, in layman's terms, sure. But like there, there's something about like when you're two years old, you fall in love with the opposite sex parent. Wait, what? 
Yeah. Like when oh, you're two, oh, like you fall in yeah, yeah. love yeah. with the opposite sex parent. And there's like some weird like attraction that you have for your father that's like I, yeah. I don't I don't want to say or your your mother in your in your uh case. And it's not like perverted, it's just attraction. Right. Yeah. But then be, because of that, there's like this tie made in your brain that now when you're an adult, you still have that association with whatever that essence, chemistry, like look, appeal is that you have with your father. You're looking for that continually for yeah. the rest of your fucking life. And your brain's like hardwired into it. Yeah. No, I've heard that too. Which means if your dad was an asshole, you're looking for assholes. <laughs> Yeah, bad boys. Uh, bad boys always get the girl, right? I guess that's uh, that's a little bit of a different psychology thing, but yeah. yeah. Did you do you have a degree in psychology? I I should I could have I did you, did I you practically to, do. Did you go to college? Uh, I mean, I went to music school. Oh okay. I got two years at a regular college too. Okay. Um, but yeah. I just I'm a YouTube like snob. Yeah. Yeah. I just a, listen to a, a lot of shit. A YouTube queen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing with parents, um, I don't know, like there's, yeah, parents dish out love differently. Like our parents dish it out better than our generation of parents are probably dishing it out. Like now, like, I think so. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think I think dads are more willing to say I love you than than prior. Uh, maybe I'm just throwing that out there no i i can definitely see that with, i think there's just for sure i think there's just a, a more i don't know there's just a more emotion now right now yeah like uh, we're evolving thank we're, god we're, <laughs> i'm not I'm barely <laughs> yeah. we're devolving uh, yeah <laughs> i am locked in uh i i love that idea of falling in love with someone who reminds you of your mom. And it makes a lot of sense. You're sucking on her tits for three years. <laughs> well, uh, when you put it that way. <laughs> for however long. Yeah, you're probably looking for a specific set of tits from what, what you were raised <laughs> with. I think that's probably what it is. Well, now it comes out. See, okay, that's why the dating apps would be good for you then. Because yeah, yeah. you'll, you'll know everything you need right there in the picture. No, I actually love all, all, all brands of, of boobies. This is this. I love this <laughs> this uh, tangent because I'm a I'm a fan of boobs myself. Yeah. Yes. Very much. Are you are you bi curious? No. No. <laughs> you're a straight. Did I, did, does something straight. make you think that? No. I mean, you just said you're a fan of. Titties. I'm just a fan of like women in general. Yeah. Like you're a straight lace honestly, gal. I'm I'm a I'm a straight admirer of my sex because I think women are just so attractive. Like. Women are just hotter than guys. Like, yeah. it's just a logical they fact. They smell good. They have smooth skin. They're... Yes. And they, like, take care of themselves. Yeah. And, like... and Dudes are gross. Their butts, okay? Like, yeah. can we just... You know, right. Curves. Like, it's fucking sexy. Uh -huh. Girls are hot. Yeah. But I'm just... I don't... I, I've, I've kissed girls. And I'm just not... I want a man. You know? Yeah. But, like, doesn't mean that I can't look and enjoy it. Mm. <laughs> we agree on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've I've talked with past girlfriends, and a lot of them talked about that they watch lesbian porn. Oh yeah, yeah, because you don't have to have the whole hairy dick thing. Yeah, yeah. like just aggressive <laughs> man associated, like men focused porn. You know. Yeah, yeah. And but all of those girlfriends have also said they're straight. Mm -hmm. And there's just something. Um, there's like a delicate nature that they find with women or maybe they just find it less threatening because they, they yeah. have issues with men like sure. where i mean I, I even have had to deal with yeah uh n not necessarily fear but um and not re not really judgments either but just uh blocks mm. that like oh all men do this or all men think this sure kind of generalized you know based on societal yeah. norms of men mm. That I've had to remove so that I just see a man specifically and like let my mind stay open. Mm. But like when you have those those that trauma and those blocks of just seeing men as a blanket statement, bad, right. scary, you know, perverted thing, I can understand why you wouldn't want them in the screen when you're <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not watching. Uh, 
any gay porn, you know, for like a man on man. But I enjoy right. girl on girl porn. Right. So why doesn't it go both ways? I don't That's know. weird. I don't totally know. It's just not the same approach like you're saying. Yeah. I guess girls are just logically, you know, factually more beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they are. Do you do you watch porn or is it not a no. cup of tea? I feel yeah. like a lot of women don't. Because besides Instagram already is that. Like I get my daily dose of porn on, on the gram. Oh yeah? Yeah. How so? It's all there. <laughs> you got some it's qu- all there. Some questionable follows. Literally, if you want to get off, go to the go to the gram. It's <laughs> it's right like, there. So, like softcore porn. Yeah, that's yeah. all. That's all I would need. Yeah, because it was, I'm not really a porn girl, anyways. But uh-huh. if I did want to watch something, it'd be on the gram because yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to get grossed out. Yeah, and it's a very thin line for your, me. Your for you page is just six packs and booties and. Uh no, thank God not. Thank God not, because I don't ever watch it. But there, there was like an instant a while ago where I just I felt like watching something, but like didn't want to go into the porn thing. <laughs> and I went on Instagram and I found so many great things. Just like girls in bikinis shaking yeah. their asses. It's fine. It's fine. How is that on there? I don't know. I don't think that should be a thing. Mm-hmm. There's supposed to be policies against that, but it's there. Yeah. And it's not going to gross you out like porn risks, you know, doing. Okay. So you're. I don't watch porn because there's a very good chance it'll lot, gross me the fuck there's out. There's a lot of gross videos yes. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, when you're searching through it, you have to see the grossest thumbnails. Like, I'm never watching that video ever. To tur- to, like, turn me off yeah. while I'm trying to get turned on. Yeah, yeah. Even when you find a good video, three quarters of the way through, you know, you're on your second come, which is always the best one, you okay. know? <laughs> it's good to know. Don't look at me when I say that. <laughs> um, the second one's always the best, and then that's when the video gets weird. Yeah. That's when they start, like, projectile whatever the fuck, you know? And I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, those are some weird videos. I think you'd have a hard-pressed, uh, a hard time finding a man that doesn't watch porn. Either, um... The emotionally unavailable one didn't. Really? Yeah. He told you that? He told me that. He lied to you. He probably lied. <laughs> he 100% lied to you. <laughs> or he's repressing something that he doesn't even know about. Yeah, po- possibly. Uh, yeah, like... <laughs> I've never heard that. I've never met a single man who doesn't watch porn. But where where's the line though? Does, because doesn't it can to become an addiction and where it like desensitizes oh, yeah. you to like a real life situation? One hundred percent. I think if you're you know choking the monkey for like four hours a day, is that is that is that like? I max out at three. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I, some when you need like five tabs of different genres of porn open to get off. How are you going to translate that into reality or finding a woman that can make that come true for you? Yeah. And what is that doing? Like what fantasy? It's it's just burning and rewiring gross parts of your brain and yeah. like uh, and callousing them over again. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, or even like some dudes who like are just have like a fucking death claw of a grip. And then they just can't be with a woman because it's just not the same grip because they're mm-hmm. so used to that, you know? There's a thing with women with that, too. Oh, sure. Like, with our vibrators, it's like, if it's yeah. too intense, then we'll never be able to, like, come right. naturally again. Yeah, you know? I need, like, five Red Bulls to yeah. <laughs> to compare to your vibe. Yeah. yeah. Or just, like, a jackhammer, like. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, keeps getting more intense. But that's the thing, too. There's uh, There's an unlimited amount of genres and like types of porn. Yeah. So like you can find anything you want and then you're locked in that genre and then you need to find this unicorn of a woman or or man to fit into that kink of yours and that's yeah. that's tough shit to find too. You know, I was actually uh down a rabbit hole on YouTube cuz I, I I this is so weird for me talking about sex, but like sure. I love that the universe is challenging me right now to like yeah. not be a 5-year-old and get all like <laughs> Yeah. Um I'm learning how to be like in touch with and comfortable with my sexuality and talking about it now. Sure. Um, but I, I, I accidentally went on down this rabbit hole because something was suggested on on YouTube for me, and it, it's uh, not furries, but like <laughs> girls that would be pets. Yeah. Like they identified as a pet. 
mm. and she would be a dog or a cat. Just submissive. And and literally crawl with ears <laughs> yeah. on and like I've seen that shit. Oof, and then like get like a, a ball. Yeah. And their boyfriends are their owners. <sighs> like That's kinda hot, but it's also It's so hot. On, <laughs> <laughs> like it's, why can't I have that king? And, like but when you're doing that in public, that's fucking weird. Yeah, and they do. Don't like, do that. On a leash. Like don't, she gets the leash with her teeth and takes it to her owner boyfriend don't and then they force go your to fucking the park. kink on poor bystanders, dude. I mean, these guys are pretty spineless and I'll just do it because it's hot, but like Yeah. Like making them drink out of a water bowl or some shit. Not making them. They want to. They prefer. Right. Like that's this is how the one girl came out to her boyfriend. She was like I kind of have a thing like, can you call me puppy? Like, da, da, da. Uh-huh. and he's like, oh yeah, sure. And then she's like, oh, and by the way, like, this is a thing. Like, I want to be like a <laughs> yeah. dog. Like, you can, can be we owned. go? Can we go buy a bowl? Like, <laughs> whoa. Yeah, and then she wants to like look out of it and stuff. It's just like, to me, <laughs> it's so sad. And like, a part of my heart dies a little bit because because you're an independent woman. No, like honestly, I have no problem with kinks, but it just makes me sad because there is. I understand where it's coming from Mm. and it's coming from, I don't feel validated as who I am. So I need to play a character Mm. that constantly needs to be validated like a dog, like good dog, you know, in in order to get my need filled with that. And it's just like the psychology of that, you Mm. know, because I'm a scientist. um, (laughs) It's 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 sad that they feel like they need to not be themselves in order to get the validation they want. Hmm. Yeah, I I would be curious to see what they would say to that. Um, I mean, I could be full of shit. I don't know their exact experience. It's also just hot, I guess. But, like, if that's a lifestyle... Well, I think, too, like, the... And I'm sure it it goes both ways. Like, there is often in every relationship, whether that's romantic or not, there's there's a dominant or submissive often a, a dominant person in a romantic relationship in a, yeah. a submissive role. Yeah. Um, I'll be with the whip. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you got the leather going? <laughs> no, okay. no, that's not my thing. I don't know what my thing is. I'm actually trying to figure that out right now. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Do you talk about this with guys on your show too? Uh-huh. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. Is my camera still going? <laughs> no. It's no, not. It's going. Okay. Going. <laughs> yeah, I've reached this point in my life where I don't give a fuck, you know? Yeah, that's a great place to be. Yeah, and I'm just saying whatever the fuck I want because um, no, one, no one gives a fuck in, in reality. LA, LA, I've never been any, and I'd be curious to go to, but LA has some, like, wild fucking... Uh, underground like sex clubs and shit oh my god i've been to them you have i've literally been to them like the bougiest like hollywood hills Whoa. like fucking twenty thousand dollars when was this um a very long time ago <laughs> this is like three hours ago yeah like last night and <laughs> <laughs> um it was just uh someone that i was working with in the industry like the music industry mm. which i realized i've said that before and people thought i meant the porn industry Oh, yeah, yeah. The in industry. mixed company, like, people <laughs> think that. So now I have to clarify the music industry. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but there was a guy that was working with the music industry, and he was, like, a, I think it's, like, a monthly 20 grand or something, and then you get invited to all these, like, Whoa. not basement, but, like, you know, mansion sex performances. They're, oh, like, so performances. It's, it's, a, it's a membership. Yeah, mm. like, elites. Whoa scary like illuminati type vibe shit that sounds crazy and they're they're all doing anal and they all have like <laughs> fucking like masks on devil horns yeah. and masks and everything it's fucking holy shit it's really dark and you were at one of these i was at one of them and you, you know how i went because yeah. you were supposed to dress all sexy and stuff i came in Cause, and, and just imagine it's like sex dungeon vibes like black and like dark everything's like dim dark as hell like this yeah. could be you don't know who the you're sex fucking. chamber of hell right yeah. now right in this gorgeous mansion but like scary uh-huh. i walk in in a white lace spaghetti strap uh, oh, sundress no. <laughs> and you were just singled out i just looked that was like the only thing that i had that was like kind of sexy did you have a mask 
No. No. And I just, I looked like a Who pure, you innocent with? child. A producer guy. Like, he someone did, that I worked with. He didn't with. warn you or anything? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but I just looked like a fucking pure saint, like, did going you, to church compared did, to everybody else. Dude, that's wild. Did you partake? Oh, hell no. no. But I watched, it which is the best out. part. I love watching, but not partaking. Because the second you partake, you're like... You lose the objectivity and you like have to start performing and like looking a certain way and being all sexy. And it's like, right. no, I just want to stand there like <laughs> and zone. zone out on like what's happening. That's that's more. There's probably a lot of drugs flowing through that party, too. Oh, I'm sure. And people were like, you know, chained up. It was intense. Whoa, dude. That's, <sighs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'll invite you next time. <laughs> Please invite me. I'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, and There's I would, some crazy shit in LA. I would have a fucking body cam on too. I would love. Yeah, no, they have like full on security. Like uh, you have sure. to leave your phones at the door. Uh, and, that makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm sure there are cheaper ones. <laughs> you know, not, you're hopeful for that. Yeah. Twenty k is a lot of my budget. Yeah, a month. A month. Yeah. Like who the fuck is going to that? Celebrities. They're all like elite businessmen or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, so there really is like a a cabal. <laughs> of sorts, yes. <laughs> a sex cabal, yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah, and, and and they probably aren't taking any IDs. There could very well be underage people there. Oh, that's a good point. You know, it was so long ago. It was probably like 2018. Like this is the underage room. Come on in. Yeah, I think they some checked creep, IDs. Some creepy shit, yeah. I'm pretty sure they checked IDs. That's good, that's good. Yeah. It's good that the elites are ob- opening some laws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Like, have I would you have you been to a sex party? No. No. No, no one's invited me. Oh, uh, left out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't stumbled in. They haven't like walked down an alley and like knocked down a door and just walked into something. Dude, there's some crazy shit in LA. You just have to like go out more because yeah. they'll they'll literally be girls like recording their their what is it? Friends only? Only fa- only, only fans. fans. Yeah. Uh, oh, friends only. Friends, you are out of touch. <laughs> um, I know. Yeah, you can tell I'm super in the loop. Um, but they'll literally be like on the streets or like in a park with their phone on their tripod, right. like yeah. showing some shit, yeah. like because the whole PDA or not not PDA. What would it be called? Like public uh, display of sex. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> of body parts. Yeah. I don't know. Um, they they do that. That's a thing. Yeah, I. The, the two gals I had um, who were the first. Oh, yeah. What did they say? The, what did the Playboy Bunny say? Well, they don't. Well, the Playboy Mansion isn't a thing anymore. Oh. So, like, they're, you know, like, they, uh, she was just saying that being a Playboy Bunny isn't as glamorous as it used to be with, like, the Hugh Hef era. So what is it now? Like, do you still have sex with an old dude? What is it? <laughs> well, I don't think they, I don't think they do hardcore. Okay. Um. It's just for the magazine, pretty much, right? They don't even have a magazine. It's just online now. Oh, my God. The internet has destroyed anything good. That's what I said, dude. (laughs) I'm like, dude, I fucking miss magazines. Okay, so she's out of a job. No, she she models, like, Mm. for their shit. uh, There's just no place now. Right. Got it. Her and the other gal, Cecily, um, they're they're doing pretty well off of it. Was she a Playboy Bunny, too? No, they're, like, only fans. Oh, dude, you get the hottest guests in here. Look at you. Well, well, they were Why the didn't o- you remind me of that one? <laughs> I could have sat and looked. <laughs> it's only two spots on that couch. You're a straight edge gal now, I, I know, right? Not really. No? Not really. I feel like you told me you're I, pretty, I used to be. Yeah. I used to be really straight edge. I tried shrooms and weed for the first time last year in my entire life. Really? Yeah. Holy fuck. Besides the one time I accidentally ate weed brownies at a kickback because I thought she said wheat because of how fucking innocent I was. I thought she said wheat brownies. And then and then I I, I had some and I started feeling weird. And she was like, these, I was like, these are kind of weird. Like, they kind of taste funny. And she's like, weird. They're, they're weed brownies. And I was like, weed. I thought you said wheat. And I had never done drugs in my life. I ran to the bathroom <laughs> and I was calling my mom. I was like, mom, I took drugs. I took drugs. Like, yeah. I can't say I've never done it now. And I was like so upset. 
Dude, uh, yeah, an edible will fuck you up. I did shrooms for the first time a few years ago, probably like three, three years oh, ago. Oh, so you're kind of new to it too. Yeah, I'm kind of diving into the psychedelic stuff this year. Okay, what else you got? Like, that's have, it. Have that's you done acid I, yet? That's all I've done. Okay. Like, I'm trying. That's part of the reason, like, I want to do this podcast too. It's just to hear other people's <laughs> stories. Yes, before, I love it. Before I really <laughs> try and dabble, you know. Smart man. But I've been smoking for ten years now. Yeah, you're gonna have to let me in on some of that. I, I feel like I'm a kind of person. You're going to be weird. I need weed. Oh, yeah? But, like, I'd never eat it or smoke it. Yeah. I'm so, I'm such a novice. Like, I have I literally think, smoked weed, like, three or four times in my entire life. Uh-huh. But every time I do, I'm just like, ah. Like, I actually fucking relax. Yeah. I'm just I, very, like, intense of a person. I think I your like, personality could use a little THC. I think I, think I need weed, you yeah. know? But, like, I I, need, I could also I see don't. you getting a little weird. I, you know, um, you start, like, uh... Yeah, you start dwelling on uh, little microcosms of life. I think that's just my normal personality <laughs> yeah, that yeah, you're thinking yeah. of, honestly. Because, like, when I when I smoke weed, I just, like, chill the fuck out. Yeah. And I get, like, kind of funny about some things. Like, I'll, uh-huh. I'll think something that's not funny is funny. Who did, who did you... Were you smoking with other people for your first time? First time was with, like, an ex-boyfriend of mine, like, from last year. And mm. then um, he was also the shroom guy that I had my first shroom experience with. He was a drug dealer, so like I got anything I wanted, oh, wow. which was just those two things. But um, <laughs> yeah, I know I have like quite the history. The daddy issue is that a- <laughs> uh, I used to, yeah. yeah, but like my my history is cleared up because okay. it's it's like I did have daddy issues, but I didn't because my stepdad was always a really great father figure. Mm, okay. So it's just like on my biological dad side was gotcha. like their weird stuff. But now he and I have like rekindled our relationship as well. That's so. Nice. It's like, it's sad because I, I used to say daddy issues, but now it's like, oh, fuck, that's not really real anymore. I like, I yeah. have a good relationship with both my dads now. <laughs> like Dude, I have two dads now. That's awesome. Yeah. D- double the presence. Yeah. <laughs> but I would have loved to fucking smoke a joint with my dad. That would have been, mm-hmm. that would have been awesome. Yeah. Although. Uh, was he into anything? He never even really drank. Mm. He was pretty straight laced dude. Mm-hmm. And I think I've kind of. I'm pretty like uh, I don't really need I don't have any vices that I really rely on. Like I don't need to smoke. I don't smoke too often. It's just nice. It's like hey, I ain't got shit going on this evening. Yeah. Let's watch like the worst Nicolas Cage movie I can find. Yeah. And get baked. <laughs> the or- Knowing. Oh my god, that shit tripped me <laughs> out the first time I watched that movie. What is it? The Knowing. No, I don't know what that. Oh is. my god, it's when the sun explodes and like he <laughs> knows before it happens, <laughs> and he's like trying to warn the world oh, or his god. family or some shit. Dude, Nicolas Cage. Uh, it's pretty cringe. I fucking love him, but yeah, he's he takes any script thrown his way. <laughs> he's just he's he's a little melodramatic. Like he's it, he, he's, he he could make. It's just borderline satire yeah. where you could easily take a portion of what he says and make a joke out uh-huh. of it. I can't wait for uh, the Nick Cage biopic when he passes away, like spanning his whole career. It's going to be a wild ride. What do you mean? Like when they make a series around his life, uh-huh. you know, like from, from the day one of Nick Cage. Are they going to do that? I would imagine for any popular artist. They or, do that? Yeah, like. Like Elton. See, they do that when they die, though. How fucking sad is that? Like Rocket Man, Elton John. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, Or even uh, you didn't see the Freddie Mercury or the Queen one? Mm-hmm. What the fuck was that called? I feel like, is that a documentary? No, it was a biopic. Rami Malek played Freddie Mercury. I don't know. You're saying words I don't understand. Was okay. it like a... a... It's a, a live... Like he like a documentary? No. Like that's the only <laughs> like word a I movie, know. movie, dude. <laughs> okay. Like playing. Uh, oh, oh, the the I Robot guy played him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, what are those called? A <laughs> uh, biopic. A biopic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. Oh, shit, I didn't know that's what it's called. Yeah, like a uh, picture biography. Yeah, no, I I I get it now. I just <laughs> didn't know it. That's what it was called. Got it. I love that kid. The, I oh my god! I love Did you watch Mr. That show? Robot. I didn't. I watched a couple apps and that I fell so off. Sick. Some of the most like black pill shit you've ever seen yeah. in your life. Just like so good. You were just connecting with that character. Yeah, because I mean, he was a hacker, like yeah. coder guy, which I'm not. But just like 
you just gotta love the narcissistic asshole lead. Like Did you watch that's it? what house was. Like that's the shit. Yeah. Did you watch it with your brother who's into that shit too? No, I watched it with my ex boyfriend. Um because that's really the only times I've ever watched any TV or movies in my life is with boyfriends. Because I, I don't watch by myself. So Especially intense stuff. I get too scared. Really? Yeah, like I need someone's hand to hold. Like I won't watch. I don't watch anything. <laughs> Even funny stuff I don't watch. I watched the movie a, a movie for the first time the other night in fucking years. Whoa, dude. And it was a funny one. But I was like, I barely did it. But my manager told me I should watch it. So I did. But like, You don't watch... Anything? No, I watch like things. I listen to podcasts on YouTube, and that's about it. Okay, I mean, at least you're consuming information. Yeah, yeah you're not just sitting in a black room. No, I'm not. So shitting. Absorbing. I'm not shitting in a black room. <laughs> yeah, I'm not shitting, but sitting. No, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't watch much, but I, I love watching things just so I, by so myself. I'm like too empathetic for it, or something. So you spend most of your time what writing or journaling, meditating? Yeah, in my life, because like that transition coming back to my life when there's no one there, it just feels sad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you're like absorbed in the movie, and like all this shit happened, and you're like, whoa, that was intense. And then you like come back to real life and you're like, it's like that that's so raven moment where you're like come back from the vision and you're like <gasps> That's such a dated, by a your dated life. rep. You just dated your yeah, existence. I know. I'm <laughs> um But yeah, like I, I just it, it, it's hard for me to transition back to my life if I'm like by myself and then I just get kind of depressed, you know. Damn, dude. I know. How sad is my life? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you need some marijuana, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, but that just might make me more paranoid when I come back to you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea. I have marijuana. I've, I feel I sound like a narc when I call it marijuana, but <laughs> marijuana. Yeah, pot, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Um, I I also get like uh, when I'm baked for a long time for like a few hours or something, I st and I start thinking about like shit I have to get done or shit I want to get done through the week. I start, yeah, I start getting this paranoia where I'm like, um, anxious. I'm doubting myself. Oh. Like I can't pull it off or no one wants me to succeed or no one cares what I'm doing. Yeah. And I get in my own head when I'm just Ooh. like in a deep, deep <laughs> coma of pot, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I usually, um, is that because you're like in a like a more lethargic state so it feels like it's going to be harder too? I don't know. I I feel like it creeps up. It doesn't happen all the time. No. I feel like that's a uh, it creeps up on me when I have a lot of all of my deadlines are self-imposed deadlines. Like no one's yeah. no one's telling me to do anything. Um but for some reason there's like this voice this yeah. critic in the back of your head that's like yeah. you'll never get it done and done. Right. And I I think um that makes sense. I think that subconscious little voice is what keeps me doing, you know, working yeah. and staying busy. Um, that vi Yeah, it's like a little voice in my vitality that's like, mm. keep chugging, bro. Because mm -hmm. um, you want to not compete, but impress people. Like you want to make other people happy. Right. Or, or, isn't, oh, isn't that terrible? Yeah. <laughs> that we have to do that. Yeah, well, like that. I have to impress other people. I can't just be internally self Well, why not? Sufficient. Why not? Flip I, the script. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck them. Well, I think I think I've hit that um I feel like I'm hitting that really now in the last couple of years. Good, yeah. I feel like a lot of my life was was like chugging or trying to, or seeing people who are doing shit at a certain level and me wanting to be at that level. Right, the comparison shit, yeah. Yeah, that's an endless pursuit. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just caring a lot less. Good. Because I, I, I think it's also like, you see, um, I haven't reached any mass, I've had a lot of minor successes in my life, but not a major yeah. Long, long lasting success and I and I think of like same with 99.9% .9 of the rest yeah, of the world yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like I think of kids not like, alone. like child stars who had this just massive um, role as a child like uh, My, Miley is a great example because she's yeah. still carrying the torch like she's killing it right yeah she's she's a unique example yeah Um, like she actually has the work ethic to like keep that going right 
like she wants to. Yeah. She's a very rare one. I love her. Very rare. Um, but I think there's just as many of those kids that had that success and could never either they didn't have enough talent to really follow it up, right. or or they got burnt out, or they had a bad experience that they didn't want to do do. Or they got entitled and rich and just got lazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You need, yeah, you need something driving you. Yeah, yeah. Whether that is competition or um, even a self-loathing aspect. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've had that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's what drives a lot of artists. Yeah. For better or for worse. The, the, to prove it. To yeah. prove that, hey, and that, that was me. That was, the, that was the pillar of my daddy issues before my dad and I, you know, fixed our relationship. Yeah. Um, cause all of this, all of my debacle with my dad started when I wanted to go to music school. Your, your bio, my bio dad. Yeah. yeah. So he wanted, he wanted me to go get a, a real job, you yeah. know, be a lawyer, <laughs> engineer like yeah. him, something solid, normal. And it was when I went, you know, wanted to go to music school and he, you know, didn't agree to that plan that it was like, I'm going to prove you fucking wrong. Cause yeah. like. I'd always been the artistic kid. I, uh -huh. I had been doing theater since I was eight. Like, I'm not that, yeah. you know, obviously. And I felt denied of. Mm -hmm. I, I felt unseen. And so I, it was definitely my mission for a very long time to prove him wrong specifically. And then, you know, as the years went by, it, you know, kind of progressed to, like, prove everybody wrong yeah. because, you know, failures and rejections happen within the industry. And it's like, okay, well, you're added to the list of people that I'm going to prove that I'm going to mm. fucking do this. Um, and I've let so much of that go, especially in the last few years. I think the pandemic really slowed everything down and kind of stopped everything and made us look at ourselves. Sure. And now, especially recently, even more recently, as in like the last few months, I've been reassessing, okay, so if I'm not proving any, everybody wrong, if that, you know, internal negative tape or self-loathing or like whatever negative motivation isn't propelling me anymore what is because there have been phases as of late and you know mountains and valleys throughout the last two years of yeah. okay i don't have that motivation anymore what am i running off of and i actually was in the park yesterday i took like a three-hour walk and like sat in the park for a really long time i was just like contemplating this i could have totally been on shrooms i swear to god people probably thought yeah. I was high because of how I was like sitting in the grass, like looking and like <laughs> touching the grass and like looking at the sky and That's just like for you, dude. talking to myself out loud. Yeah. Like I don't give a shit. Um, and I realized that <sighs> instead of that proving wrong or even that guilt of like, I'm not who my parents wanted me to be or I'm not the one that the opportunity wanted, or I'm a failure, whatever, coming from that, and I'm going to prove them wrong. Instead of coming from that, I'm starting to feel like, because I've been in the neutrality of not being run by that, now I'm starting to feel this little added positive thing of like, I kind of just want to express who I am. Like, just because. Hmm. Yeah. And I know that sounds so simple, but like, it's really starting to integrate in me uh -huh. and I just I feel more free to just like go for it for no yeah. reason at all yeah I think a lot of musicians um, or artists in general they they try and when they're first starting or when they're just a young artist they're trying to make they're trying to fit into some mold that they want for themselves and they're trying to say something that can that can connect for other people more so than themselves almost. Yeah. That's been a big thing for me too. Like, like, cause I, I do, I do want to, I do want to inspire people. I do want, um, others to be curious and brave to explore who they are and find who they are. But I'm realizing that I just have to be an example of that for myself. You know, isolated from that mm. motivation. Cause it's like, if I don't fully explore me and honor myself, then I, I can't, that's not being the example for someone to do that for themselves. So mm. I, in a way it is kind of like just being in a bubble. And if someone hears it and inspires them, great. If not, then great. Cause mm. like I, I got to express myself. Fuck it. Yeah. 
Well, imagine. Um, I know we got back on music. I want to hear about your shroom trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, one sec. Like, yeah. uh, like imagine. Um, Sorry, I went off. No, I love that. Um, I know, like a lot of Scandinavian countries do this, mm. but our country. They don't funnel. Patriarchy. They don't funnel kids who are creative into a creative path. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, a lot of schools are cutting art, yep. you know, from their curriculums. And in in a lot of European countries, they they notice this kid, this kid's an artist from a young age. And I think you can talk to any parent or teacher, and they can see that in their kid. Like, yeah, this kid isn't an athlete. This kid isn't uh, very good at math, but he's a fucking hell of a drawer or um, he's a hell of a, he's just a, a, a curious kid. And I think they put them in curriculums that can foster that mm-hmm. better than we do. They're forcing like people like you and I to fucking do like trigonometry or calculus or... Um, learn fucking us i mean learning history is good but but just doing classes that are so that are going to be so irrelevant from our future um that it's uh it, it's just a waste of money for them it's a waste of time for us um like my sister gianna like cuz you know in high school you can do electives mm-hmm. you can choose some of your classes that was my shit yeah exactly <laughs> and my sister gianna like she barely got her uh her high school diploma because she like (laughs) like basically just did all art classes and like abandoned all of the core curriculum classes love that but uh that's what should be done for people that have those brains i don't know like our society just puts such an emphasis on on the sciences and the fucking uh well, not even the sciences. Like, those are the cool ones. Yeah. Those are the ones that get in the system that are cool. Like, yeah. those are the top dogs. Well, I think Usually, sh- it's people working at Starbucks or just, yeah. like, customer service of sorts. Like, uh-huh. you know, the, even the uh, programmers, like my brother, like, I think they're the, the cool ones because yeah. they they do love that. And, and there are jobs that, right. you know. Well, it's the same thing for them. Like, there are, like, a lot of unhappy lawyers and doctors, too. But, yeah. like, usually when you get in positions like that, it's it's a, there's a drive there. Like, you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Like, uh, for, for them, too. Like, there's no reason for them to be in a ceramics class if they're all they fucking, like, right, right, love right. doing is doing math problems. So that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, if you ask me, I mean, I, I don't know which, if you're asking me anything, but in my opinion, it's whatever. But like, I think that school is a joke. I think it's a waste of time. I think it's a <laughs> indoctrinating, brainwashing. You're just an anarchist. Prison. And yeah. I think that there should be another way. But at the same time, what is a better way? I don't know. I've like literally sat down and tried to solve the problems of the world and there are no great solutions. Mm -hmm. It's just, they all come with problems. Yeah, We just happen to be in a dual dualistic universe and it's just both like there's going to be anarchy and hell either way you look at it. So like (laughs) whatever the lesser hell is, I think is what we should strive for, Uh but there's always going to be an element of it. So I mean, I don't think there's any perfect solution, even with creative kids, like adding more arts programs to schools and stuff like that. Okay, that's that's great for them to like harness and explore that. Mm -hmm. But I would not wish my career on my worst enemy. This has not been a great (laughs) career path. Yeah. Although I love what I do. If you want to make money and have stability in life, if you value that, this is not the route to go. Yeah. So it's like I, I understand and have forgiven and talked to my father about why he said I shouldn't go to college for music and uh-huh. denied paying for that. I get it because in the world, the way that it's set up, it, it's not a great path. And I don't know what the solution is to make the arts more valuable in a monetary sense. I don't know how to fit that into capitalism. I mean, I think we have in some ways. And, and like I said, you know, the 1%, the small percentage has figured it out and, you know, they've hit the jackpot, but for the starving artists, it's just there's just too big of a gap and it's not a reliable way to live. Mm. I think you need to start the She Nova commune. <laughs> and it's uh could be a nude commune, could be uh, fully clothed. But I think you would have a unique curriculum. Nudist colony all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could open one, where where would you throw it? 
Mars, probably. Mars. I'll, maybe I'll start something with Elon, maybe. Oh, yeah. He's got something up there going on, maybe. Like, I feel like whatever feel like, we do, we got to start from scratch because all this shit's not, yeah. it's, it's doomed. I feel like if I got in a, a commercial spaceship by Elon, I would blow up immediately. It would just be my luck. <laughs> You know, like the first man like mission. Like all of them are great, but then just yeah. like the one you get yeah, in. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It just detonates on launch. Is that why you have a Tesla? <laughs> I don't have a I'm Tesla. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I kind of want a Tesla, but I hear they're fucking chunks of trash on wheels. Well, yeah, because like after seven years, the batteries die and they cost like $25,000 to replace. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. So you just have to like have a buttload of money and not care that you're going to have to basically buy another car. And I also years. heard like the the trim and like just the components that are like the like it just when it rains it leaks in the trunk it's just not there yet it's just like it's just not there yet it's a toy it's not there yet yeah it's not. someday yeah. it's a great idea For great sure. concept but I it's be- like it's not there yet even with the charging and stuff it's a nightmare yeah yeah what what else could they make cars run on that would be self sufficient like um, i mean apparently nuclear is a thing <laughs> yeah you just have a nuclear bomb in your trunk yeah, well, I mean, nuclear power is apparently safe. Right, I, I right, haven't right, right. really done the research on it, but apparently... Yeah, it's totally... It's the cleanest And wasn't there, have. like, a thing with Tesla that instead of, like, dirty electricity, there's, like, another one? Like, you know what I'm fucking talking about. Yeah, it's... Uh, I do know what you're saying. But like, I think that still requires fossil fuels. Right. Yeah. To fund. So that doesn't solve anything. And there's um, like mining, like mining for all these minerals to make these batteries. You know what we're going to do? We're going to be able to siphon from the 12th dimension. Oh, yeah. Just like pure energy. Hell yeah. Yeah. We just (laughs) see this is what we need. This is why we're needing to evolve. This is why Uh we're all having spiritual awakenings. And so the portal can like open (laughs) up to the 12th dimension. And then we have all the energy we need. We like literally just like touch our house and it's like it's lit for the rest of our lives. Like our house is always energize them um so we need to create so energetic portals you need to, to other dimensions. you need to work at one of those colliders you know where they're colliding atoms and shit yes that's scary this yeah. is uh this is beyond our pay grade yeah got you this is why we're musicians <laughs> this is why we bang on shit <laughs> <laughs> so i got a few um a few little advice things we can we can have some fun with people. Oh, are we going into that portion now? Because I really wanted to hear about your shrimp trip. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've it wasn't anything special. Oh, okay. Mine was. Do you want to hear about mine? Yes, please. I really was just asking you, so you ask me. I, d- <laughs> I didn't do a goddamn thing. I just laid in the grass pretty much. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And I walked around. Well, I was playing I was playing a video game uh, the last time I was doing it. it was just, I talked about this already. Not but, the first time. Uh, the second time. Oh, okay, okay. And it was like a spooky video game. And I was oh, like shit. S- sweating my balls off. Dude, this is my advice to anybody that is going to do shrooms. Whatever you focus on grows. Like, I mean, that's like the nature of the universe, right? Yeah. But like when you're on shrooms, anything you focus on becomes the biggest, most important thing. And you go into it so deeply. Right. Like if I were to focus on this tripod, I would know everything about its <sighs> essence to its deepest uh-huh. level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so if you go into something bad, you're going to know the depths of that. Like nobody's fucking business. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about psychedelics in general is that you you overanalyze shit that you just do not analyze in yeah. a sober brain. I wouldn't even say analyze. I would say see. Like yeah. I, I do think you're right, seeing right, right. into it like a, a truth, like a deeper truth. Yeah, like you don't even, you don't even need your eyes open. Yep, yeah. You will start sensing shit. Your brain will start making that that world for you. Hell yeah. Which I'm excited to do. Yeah, maybe maybe you and I can find some some tabs and just get blitzed out. Yeah, I haven't done streams in a while. No, I mean something deeper. Oh, okay. Like that's acid tabs? Yeah, Is that what that I've means? never done acid. I've never done... I'm still kind of like not hip to the lingo. You're a little, are you spooked out by it? No, not at all. No. I just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's the the best like DMT, MDMA, ketamine. Uh, okay, I've 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 done ketamine. I oh forgot, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I went down a K hole hella hard. Really? Oh yeah. So here's the funny story with my K hole. Uh huh. Le- legit, I met up with a spiritual healer. Sick. For like a cleansing of energies and demons and just you know a purge. Uh huh. 
Uh-huh. Where was this? Dude had me snorting fucking ketamine <laughs> when I thought I was just getting like what like you, sound healed. What were you snorting it out of? Um, a dollar bill? It, yeah, it was like a straw or something. I don't know. A metal straw. Uh, yeah. Th- yeah. You were 2 k out. Yeah. Remember. So I took ketamine not knowing and went down a K-hole. I literally blacked the fuck out and I was just like, I had these visions. It was just literally like Matrix style black <laughs> with like rolling codes, Whoa. like hills of like rolling codes. Mm. And like sometimes they opened up into like wormhole and I would like, like a go total in them. simulation. Yes. And it was like more than 3D. It was it was huh. like another dimension and I was like in totally I was one with it. I was like more than 3D? Yes. And I was I was with the code. So like I wasn't <laughs> surfing on the code. I Holy was code shit. rolling with the code. It was bizarre. So you were wow. So you were like one one with the bytes. You were like a megabyte in a sea of gigabytes. Yes. And I knew that that was my home. Like that it felt <laughs> like this is where I, I actually, that's, uh, that was my source. How did you get, do you remember coming out of that? Oh yeah. I, I came out of it and he looked at me as like, you are now cleansed of all the demons. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck was that dude? Who, and, like, who is this guy? I don't know. I don't know. Like I met him at a vegan place and I thought he was like a healer and he says he was going to start doing retreat retreats in like Malibu for like celebrities and stuff. And so I kind of trusted him. <laughs> I think he was just some random guy. That He's thought, a homeless guy. Honestly, could have been. <laughs> he was just wearing thrifted fits. And he didn't realize. Yeah, exactly. To bring it full circle. <laughs> That's fucked up. So, um, so you, you tell me you had, did a shroom. A shroom oh yeah. I'll just say too. briefly, like shrooms changed my fucking life. They opened up my mind, but okay. So I've been telling my friends forever that I natural trip, like ever since I was a little girl, my first natural trip was, uh, 15 ish. Mm. And I basically feel like I can see through reality. Like I can see past the veil and I can see the levers of actually what's controlling the universe. And I get hallucinations. Sometimes I see energy. Sometimes I see colors. Sometimes I see... This is often? When I have natural trip, yeah. I mean, I'd say 10 or 15 times a year. Whoa. It's pretty often. Just randomly? Yeah. It's either when I'm, like, by myself. Honestly, i You can't induce this at all? That's a, that's exactly what I was about to say. You took the word out of my head. There's a collective cloud we're connected to now. Um, <laughs> I have used mantras and certain prayers, for lack of a better word, to ask for these visions and mm-hmm. ask for seeing, I guess. Um, and I can't do it all the time, but... I don't want to say I can't do it all the time. I really can do it anytime I want. It's just sometimes I don't feel like I have the time or space for it. Dude, you got to teach people this power. Yeah. Well, okay. So anyways, the reason why I say all this is because... Unless you're just a schizophrenic. It's very possible. <laughs> I, I Very, very possible. Um, but when I did shrooms, um, I, and by the way, I took this so seriously. I had been thinking about this for years. Like I had my journal of questions I wanted to ask the universe, like all these intentions. Like I went out into the, to a field. This was with my drug dealer boyfriend, you know, Sweet. and we went out to a field and I had my little, you know, blanket on. I was just like sitting there. Like I had done a prayer and like a chant, like to like prepare myself for this. I had my crystals, like all this shit. And I was just like waiting for the shrooms to kick in. And then I just opened my eyes and I look around and I got up and I just started laughing my ass off because I was like, I fucking knew it. I knew I'd been natural driven this whole fucking time because I was like seeing how I see when I natural trip. And so shrooms proved to me and gave me the validation that I really am like accessing, sorry, I really am like accessing a part of my brain that, um, well, well, these normally chem- you don't. Well, these chemicals are in your brain, are they not? Yes. Yeah. 
So I think maybe I just have like more. You somehow. have some ability to grasp it that I no one so. else does. Yeah. Have you? Uh, when, when did you first do this? I I was like fifteen the first time I national trip. At least consciously remembering it. Holy shit. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Have you told other people about this? Not too many, but some. Um. Uh, wow. Yeah, I'm like I'm. There's some weird like like thinner veil that I have access to. Is it like a deep fucking trip? It's all truth, everything you could ever meet. Holy shit. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm jealous. It's pretty intense, actually. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, you gotta lead some fucking classes. Man. Yeah, I'll start a cult. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'm, I'm in. I'm I have a vision. Pay me money. 20000 a month. Pay me money. And I'll tell you it's also a sex club. <laughs> yeah, it's get on the floor with your mask. <laughs> oh. Pay me $20,000 and I'll tell you everything you want to know. And you have to drink out of a water bowl. Yes. In my mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. Uh... Damn, that's awesome, dude. When's the last time you did it? Uh, shrooms or a natural trip? A natural trip. Yesterday in the park. I literally, oh. yeah. Like, I'm telling you. And, and I so know. that's why you were there for three hours. Yeah, it may, I make it sound like it's super often. It's not. Yeah. Um, it's maybe only like once or twice a month. Like, I re even sometimes less than that, depending on how busy my life is. But when I have time, it's, yeah, a couple times a month. Like, I really go somewhere else. You ever had sex while you're tripping? No, but I want to because there's a whole like <laughs> kundalini energy. There's gotta be some deep fucking emotions. That come well, and it's gotta be with someone safe, you know. And yeah. I, I just don't feel like I've ever been with anybody that has that kind of place mm. to access. I feel yeah. like people are just so blocked off, you know. I think yeah. it would have to be mutual. I'm not gonna go someplace. I mean, maybe you if both we were need all to be on tripping, shrooms, but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, it yeah, it would f almost feel like you're being taken advantage of if you're tripping and the other person isn't. Well, yeah, and it's just like weird. Like I'm gonna yeah. be like saying some weird ass shit. Yeah, doing some crazy <laughs> like, moves. Do you see that? Oh, you know, it's you're like, doing like backflips. He's just bed like, or um, can you look hot so I can come? I'm just like <laughs> Jesus, this bitch. You're like I gotta go. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm jealous. You should write a book. About what? Um, how, how do you write a book about everything and all of like what is like that's insane. All right, maybe a pamphlet. A pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's it's a it's a trip. I don't know. Damn. Well, yeah, I I really want to experience shit like that. I haven't really. Some people have those fucking trips that change their whole lives, like you're saying. I haven't had that. Like the shrooms that I did, yeah, they were fun, but they weren't, they weren't eye opening or anything. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is because I I hear some people like that, and then I hear other people that it's like it really fucking opened me up or whatever, yeah. like it changed their life. I don't know what the X factor is. All I know is is for me, if I'm at all in a closed off state, I want to say. If if I may introduce the the term awake and asleep, I feel like I throughout my life have been perpetually in and out of being awake and asleep. Mm. And if you're asleep, if you're in, if you're in the program, if you're in the conditioned like the matrix off state, yeah. If you're in the matrix, <laughs> this it's just not going to happen because this stuff is so unbelievably unbelievable yeah that it wouldn't conform to any of those ideas that you're currently mm. in it's just a totally different state of mind also to the dosage matters <laughs> yeah like for you, sure you don't know what your dose really is because especially like me who have zero tolerance for like oh that's good that should be good yeah exactly so like a, a minor dose would probably you know bring me to the fucking moon but yeah, and, or, or well, have you tried? You've tried for shrooms. Shrooms, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, you're just but, saying you maybe like, need more. But like other, even other psychedelics, you mm. you really don't know how deep that dose is going to affect you until you try. Yeah. which and then it, you're fucked already. You just have to yeah. get into it. And I heard DMT. You have to be really careful with that. That ketamine healer guy. He was telling me about DMT. Like uh -huh. so little, so little will take you so far. Like he he said his. His um, his DMT trip, he 
was slingshotted. This is his soul experience. Uh -huh. He was slingshotted from here to the edge of our solar system in two seconds. Like nauseating Whoa. slinging effect. Yes. That's awesome. So, and, and he was like, that was I'm very little. I don't know what a grant, I don't know what the fuck any yeah. terminology is of that, but. Someone, someone was telling me they, uh, I don't remember. I think, I think it was LSD. But they took it and they lived their entire life. Like their entire, every year of their life, they lived it. And then they came out of their trip and they were back to being 27 or whatever. What well, happened? Like Did he have he a had family? A, he Did had he... a family. <gasps> he died. How'd he die? He was like an old age type. Like oh, he shit. lived to be like 80. And um, well, that's kind of good. Like, yeah, that's, that's promising. That's beautiful in its own way. <laughs> Not but, a car crash at 40. That's nice. But yeah, to to feel your whole life lived. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck. That's got to change you. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. That That makes me like remember the feeling of like it all just is. Yeah. Like. And when you experience that in a and shroom it, trip, it's like, okay, maybe there's nothing I can change or do. Like, it just right. is. Well, we're that's okay. Well, we're just a, a pile of fucking elements, hmm? you know, that somehow we, we are just the universe observing itself Correct, yeah. in its own way. And yeah, dust to dust, man. Like, we're not going to be here forever. Um, we don't even know what consciousness is. This is the problem. Yeah, we can't. Like, we can go into the physical parts of it. You can't totally define that. You can't figure it out. It's like for me, I think we're antennas <laughs> going to like a cloud. Yeah. I don't think we're like hard drives that just have a limited amount of information that can uh -huh. be processed. I think we do have the ability to access all knowledge and everything. It's just a matter of like opening up that funnel. Like free will is a debatable thing in that. Um, mm. I think we have behaviors and motivations and tendencies that we aren't controlling in the day to day and that are driving us from one moment to the next. Like, yeah, we have passions that might put us in a certain path, mm -hmm. um, but we're also subject to the randomness mm. of. Oh, like, so like free will versus fate kind of argument? Yeah. Like uh, that, that there's like a predetermined destiny we all have? Yeah, to a degree. I don't know if I totally believe in it. Like I, I'm very much of the mindset you can will your path in some way. But there's also so many doors that are opened, open to you. You know, you like, right, right. like I'm not going to be the fucking president of, uh, fucking Denmark. So why do you believe some doors are opened for some people and then not for others? Is it just like well, a cruel randomness? Yeah. The, you think, you the think randomness, it's randomness? The randomness that, that you came out of your mom's pussy, you know? Isn't like, that so weird? Yeah. Ooh, I did a shrimp trip once and that was like a major thing for me. Uh -huh. I realized everybody came out of a fucking vagina yeah. <laughs> and it freaked me the fuck out. Sorry, that that definitely fucked Well, it's with so my head. random too because it's like, what are the odds that you were that egg and that sperm cell? Or uh, But does that seem like random chaos? Because that's like yeah. pretty perfect. <laughs> yeah. Like, how does that happen? I don't know if I that's random by chance. I truly don't know, dude. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, like doors are closed to you because, yeah, you're born in the family you were born into, uh, those genetics, the the financial situation your parents were in, mm -hmm. um, where, in the, where in the country you were born. I kind of feel like our souls choose that, though. I think we choose a narrative. We choose what we want to learn. So you believe in souls? I do. I don't. <laughs> you stole this motherfucker. <laughs> I, got, I got no soul, Are you a bro. Satanist? No, no, no. Isn't that what Satanists are? They don't believe in souls? I don't think so. Or they just sell their souls. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, sure, so yeah. what do you believe? I mean, Satanist, Satanism is like a, a joke, essentially. Oh, oh. Like most, oh, it is? Most of them believe. Isn't there a church of Satan? Yeah, they treat it as like... Uh, oh, it's, it's mostly as like a group of atheists, really. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess I would align more with them. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, I don't, I believe, I believe it's all just the chemical makeup in your brain that's defining your vitality, your decisions, your will, your uh, behavior, 
who you love. So, but the but it's also nature and nurture. They're working together, man. Mm. You know, you're you're inheriting this line of genetics, mm. um, which defines your temperament, your uh, yeah, your ambition. So you think we're a little hardwired then? You think we have some things that are just like we're gonna be stuck like that? I, no, I don't want to say hardwired is the right word. I, I think brain. I think your brain is malleable, mm -hmm. and that you can change your behavior, but to a limit. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm not. I'm very level headed. I would suppose, but I don't think I would. Um, I don't want to be doing like. Uh, like backflips in Circus Soleil or anything. That's not my vibe. Your soul didn't choose that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but that's where nurture gets in. Like I wasn't. No one in my family were really acrobats. Yeah. And I would imagine a lot of those people had circus people in their families. You know. Wouldn't it be nice if our parents Although, <laughs> were like famous musicians? Wouldn't that yeah. be just yeah. fucking fantastic? Although I do unicycle. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and juggle. That's cool. But uh, look at you. I didn't choose a career path down that line. <laughs> yeah, just for fun. Just for fun. Yeah. So you believe that your soul is dictating a large portion of your life? I mean, I do not see my soul as a dictator, no. No. But maybe what? I do. Actually, you know what? I actually like that word because... What what you're saying about that there's there's only so much movability and, and change or through our free will that yeah. we can make because there's kind of an almost I don't want to say predetermined, but like magnetic thing. Like mm -hmm. some things were just kind of predisposed to having happened to us. Yeah. You could chalk that up to experience or, you know, how you grew up or genetics or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there is kind of a pull somewhere. And I and I I feel like at least for me, like when I connect with these higher realms or like I used to call it like an energy realm, um, I just see these um, these codes of me like I set out to have certain experiences to evolve and experience certain things. And some of those predetermined situations are extremely painful, extremely limiting, extremely frustrating. And they're there to build the path of strength to where my soul wants to mm -hmm. graduate or, you know, learn, like, you know, experience. Yeah. So there's a magnetism between everyone's souls. Yes. And what I channeled yesterday, which I got really excited about this terminology, is the jet stream mm. that there's this jet stream in life that when we're on that path, every door that's supposed to open when we're not resistant, when we're not in the mud, when we're not out the jet stream opens and it's not necessarily what we think. It's not necessarily what our ego has gotten attached to or the path that we've been conditioned to believe that is the right path for me. Even recently I've been challenging and letting ego attachments go with being an artist and just letting myself just be a fucking human yeah. with a soul uh -huh. and like whatever the fuck you want to do just fucking do like I've been forced to release these identities because the jet stream is changing day by day and I can't be locked to these lower heavier identities that are like slowing me down because the the truth is is we are undefinable and we're trying to define ourselves all the time. And I'm just finding that to be more limiting. So the jet stream and being in that and awake in it and conscious and aware and not blinded by illusion and conditioning is I think kind of the goal, like what our soul wants. That's where our soul wants us to be. And whatever comes from that, the achievements that we acquire from that, the goals we hit from that, that's all kind of just like the side effect. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine at least, yeah, our perspectives are slightly different. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think we agree. D I'm disagree with me. I'd love, I'd love that to be challenged because this is just t terminology I like came up with yesterday. Yeah. In your, in your trip? Yeah. yeah. My natural trip. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, well, I think there's, like, uh, yeah, you could be in that jet stream. But, yeah, call it fate, call it randomness, call it chaos. Like, you go to a bar tonight and totally randomly fall in love. And what brought that person there? Was there was it a magnetism of souls? Was it a complete random coincidence? I I, I don't, would I don't know. I would argue lack of resistance. Mm. I think when stuff happens like that, we're not expecting it. Yeah. We all our expectations have gone and because of that, we're we're going in off guard. There's like no resistance. The ability for things to flow in, I think, is easier. Well, that's and all... I'm not like a fan. I'm not a law of attraction person, but I mm-hmm. do think there is such thing as resisting and yeah. being in flow and expectations and like all this stuff. It really clouds shit up and fucks shit up and prevents things like that from happening. And in my experience, I've noticed that. Yeah. Well, that's also a positive uh, outcome. Mm. You could go there and yeah. get the shit beat out of you. Right, right, right. Uh, Which is what I was thinking. I would love to talk about a negative and why that happens. Yeah. Like, uh, like who, like why do we deserve that? Uh-huh. You know, is that the universe trying to teach you a lesson or is it us in resistance? Uh, because maybe we didn't, we weren't even supposed to go to the bar. We were supposed to be at home writing the book that our soul yeah. wants us to write. Yeah, that's where it gets that's where it gets hairy, right? Yeah, cuz who knows? It could just be random. Yeah, I I feel like I I could be seen as a bit of a I don't know if neo, an, a nihilist is the right word. I love that word. I use that yeah. for myself all the time, especially yeah. in regards to social media. I am a nihilist first and foremost. Yeah. <laughs> like I I don't think anything is actively trying to work against you or work for you. It's a it's it's you versus the world. Mm. That's what I kind of think. Uh, like you can make connections and network and make friends that can you can all help lift each other up, but you couldn't do that. Um, but if I, we're if we're the universe, like if we're made of the same shit, yeah, we're already connected. Wouldn't we be just as neutral as the world? Wouldn't that mean the world is then neutral as well? <laughs> yeah. So then maybe it's but, not us against anything. That's an illusion. Maybe right. the separateness is an illusion. But I, I also... Maybe it's not us against anyone. I also think this is just... Yeah, like you're talking like the human brain just trying to put meaning mm-hmm. on our tiny little existence. Like a gamma ray could fucking annihilate Earth tomorrow. Yeah, right now. Like yeah. this could all... Just vaporized. Gone. And no one will hear this podcast. Are you afraid of death? No. Me neither. Why are you not afraid? Um, cause fuck it, fuck this place. I, I can't <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> There's the nihilist. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not afraid of it. I've, I've seen a lot of it growing up. I don't think, hmm. and I'm happy with everything I've done. Hmm. I'm happy with all the relationships I've made. Had a lot of good, a lot of good lovers, a lot of good friends, a lot of good family, hmm. a lot of great. Memories have been made with with music, with in school. I haven't had anything. You know, some people in school, like they get like something happens when they're younger. Something happens to you that affects you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, like for like if you get bullied or something and that turns you. Into a bully yourself either, or whatever. Either into a bully or just a coward for life. Yeah. Um. I never, I never ran into those situations as a kid. I was relatively confident. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think probably losing my parents or going through my parents' illnesses was probably the most life changing, forcing independence on you on a younger age. That's huge. Yeah. Um, but I also think just with my temperament genetically i can kind of handle stress mm. some people can't do that is that genetics could be it or could, just like a predisposition personality I, I think it's a predisposition mixed with with experiences mm-hmm. that grind that down maybe yeah, yeah yeah um 
But yeah, like some people are afraid to go to a party. Some people are afraid to go on a stage. Some people are are afraid to just talk to someone for the first time. Yeah. Fear's a bitch. And it takes time to fucking get to that point. Like I wasn't when I was first in my band, I was the lead singer and like the lead writer and shit. But dude, I would like hide in my car until the set time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I still do that shit. Because <laughs> I was afraid to just I was just first of all nervous about the impending set Mm -hmm. but also just nervous about meeting new people yeah and I think college kind of ground that out of me because I was meeting a lot new people over time and um it's hard going on stage often yeah but yeah when you aren't having those moments as a young adult or a, a teen that you can that you can grind down that that uh, anxiety. When it, when are you gonna find those moments as an adult, and how are you gonna grow past that? I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like you have to experience those as young as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Whether they're traumatic or not, it's probably good for you in some way. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's heavy I, shit. I don't even know what I'm getting at. Was it the same thing like from for you and me where, where you were just terrified of putting yourself out there like that? I mean, I was terrified of judgment. I was I I and I still catch myself to like a degree, you know. Yeah. Not even a degree. Like in certain situations, I've just noticed the habit of like, oh, it's my neighbor. Hi, how are you? Yes. Oh no, everything's great. Oh, how's the cat? No, no, no. It's just like like, I don't want to fucking be nice. I'm tired. I don't even feel like talking to you, but I do. I put on a show and I catch myself do that. And then I walk away. And I'm like, why did I just fucking act like an idiot? It's like, it's just kind of out of habit because mm. there's like this societal script. Oh my God. I fucking hate it. There's a societal script that when you go to a store, you Small have to talk. say this. When you see someone in this situation, you say that. And it's like, if you go off the script, people are literally yeah. going to lose it. they're gonna go uh, they're like gonna glitch and like uh-huh. you know uh what is it uh and npc it out yeah. and just like literally not know what the fuck to do yeah. and i'm just like uh, even even when it comes to looking at people like i'll be in public like in public spaces and i'll just like look at someone like yeah. i'm looking at you now like uh-huh. you know and I'm, I'm an npc yeah and they literally <laughs> They literally look away so fucking fast. Right, yeah. And it's like, God forbid you actually look at someone or feel into someone or like have a connection because we're all just like literally coded to like avoid each other. Yeah. And it's like annoying as fuck. And and I've caught myself just by habit following those scripts and I'm just kind of tired. So now I say random shit. Like, like when I'm like doing, like getting a smoothie or something and someone asks me how my day is, I'll, I'll be like, dude, I had to create, and I'll just like say something really bonkers or be like, honestly, I'm terrible today. Like I just had the worst like mental breakdown. And, and they're like, what the fuck? It, they get scared. Yeah. <laughs> they legit, and I think because I'm a woman, it's like, they're like, okay, she's just a little weird, uh-huh. but like, I, there's no threat here. Everybody is looking for the threat. Yeah. I, and, and I get it. And especially in LA, like. There's weird people that could do weird shit, like, you know, stab a random woman on the sure. street in Hollywood for no reason. Classic. This stuff is fucking happening, okay? So, like, I get it. We're looking for the threat. And it's tough with our, like, threaded, cool thing now, like, uh-huh. the thrifted shit. It's, you know, <laughs> everybody looks homeless. Yeah. <laughs> everybody looks like they could be sure. a problem. Uh-huh. They could be a school shooter. I don't know. Um <laughs> We're all problems in our own way, though. Yes, but I understand why we're on guard. But at the same time, like, are we just going to stay in survival mode forever? Or are we going to evolve and learn how to have deeper connections and, like, actually well, live? Well, well, not everyone is uh, is trying to hear your Be life awesome. story, yeah. you know? Oh, oh, yeah. Everyone's mm-hmm. just trying to get through the work day. And get the fuck home. No, I get it. There's a point. Yeah. Like, don't yeah, be yeah. annoying. I understand. Yeah. Don't talk to me forever. <laughs> yeah. I get it. But at the same time, like, is it just the same script all the time? Like, can we just throw yeah. a wrench in it every once in a while and, like, yeah. do something interesting? Well, some people are are just not conversationalists. I get it. And, and that goes back to people just having not no social experience. Yeah. Or um, 
Okay, but even at parties. Okay, let, instead of like small talk, like you know, everyday shit. Let's go. Let's talk about party. I I go to a friend's birthday party tonight. Not looking forward to it. Why? Yeah. Because every single conversation is going to be the same. Yeah. It's going to get to a certain point, go nowhere, never going to see that person again. And all the energy that I just put into like 10 different people, like <laughs> getting to know them is for nothing. Like, yeah. okay, we followed each other on Instagram. I don't fucking care. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like where, where, how do we get that to evolve mm. into like a next level? I think uh, without, without connecting it to the soul aspect, I think there's just, People click with each. Some people just click. Mm. Like, yeah, like I've been in so many just dead conversations where where you're carrying, you're carrying the weight, you know, and some people are just incompatible. Yeah. And I think that's the vast majority of people you run into. Mm. You don't connect with them on anything. Right. And so you have to resort to just basic small talk points. Yeah. To carry on some sort of connection. So and see, that's when I go, fuck it. Like, yeah. hey, it's been nice. I gotta go. Like, right. I, I honestly, my tolerance for that has been so low. Like, if we're not connecting and this person is obviously not on my wavelength, honestly, I don't think he would even notice. Like, there have been times mm -hmm. where I've, like, dipped out of a conversation and they're still just like, woo, 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 woo. Like, yeah. didn't even know what the fuck happened. And it's like, mm -hmm. why am I spending my energy on that? Like, I'm gonna go do something else. Well, that's uh, the, thing, the same thing with dating yeah. Dating. Yeah. You know, you have to filter out the people you aren't connecting with. Yeah. And that's uh, that's a Herculean task in its own right. Because there's dude. so many. There's so many <laughs> fucking people you wish you didn't spend your evening meeting. Yeah. And then it's just like an energy suck, a time waste. Yeah. Especially, um, yeah, like some partners who are very demanding over the course of a day, like text-wise or... or um, so there's something with relationships I'd love to ask you because you seem kind of like hip to the shit <laughs> yeah. or you just have had terrible experiences like me. Uh, but like, how much do you think a healthy connected relationship is possible in this day and age when pretty much all that's being sold is illusions of each other. Mm -hmm. I feel like none of us are actually seeing our like true a, selves. Like a digital profile? Yeah. No, well, not, no, not even that. Like, in person. Like, we kind of... Was that my stomach? I feel like that was my stomach. Sweet. <laughs> Girl, it's super weird. <laughs> we, 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 like, subconsciously get into these roles. It goes, okay, I'm looking for a person like this. And yeah. then I go, oh, okay, I, I can I can do that. I, mm -hmm. I can be good for that for you. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, and then you're going to be the person that acts like they don't care too much, but you're not too close. So, okay, perfect. That's exactly what I need. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, there's this like subconscious nonverbal contract that, okay, as long as you hold up your illusion, I'll hold up mine. And then we can go to our parents and be like, hey, look, I found a person that's exactly the way that I need them to be, blah, blah, blah. And then happily ever after, but not because then years go by. You realize that's not who they really are. The role and the gig is up and you realize the entire thing was just an illusion. Oh, my God. Damn, dude. Is that a question? That's That sounds like a brutal uh, assessment of a relationship should not be that. Okay, so am I just jaded? Do I just think that's what everybody's doing? Because I feel like that's what we're doing. Well, I, you know, we all um, we all hide things. We all we all have like you know the mask that you put on for for family, for friends. But yeah, when you're in a romantic relationship, to actually achieve true compatibility, there has to be like no barriers. Yeah. And um, and that shit gets ugly sometimes. And that could take a year. That could take a month. Yeah. That's just, that's when it gets down to just pure, um, yeah, the pure connection. Mm -hmm. I've never really, um, I mean, I've been in short, a number of short-lived uh, relationships that, that you start, you start finding, you start in your head picking out the things that, you don't like about them mm -hmm. or uh, you know you won't be able to f fix or mm -hmm. like that's just something you either need to accept or move on from mm -hmm. um and that's and that's up to you because because mm -hmm. you're not most people when they get in a relationship too they're not 
going to tell that other person all of the red flags that they're that they're throwing out. Mm-hmm. It's either like either you dip out from the mm-hmm. relationship or you live with it. Like it seems like you need someone who's so is super connected with you, um, just on a a verbal wavelength, and like I I the same thing with me. Like I've been I've been with a a girl once who just was boring. Yeah, you know, just to put it plainly. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't have. Any re- anything that, oh, I get it. I that get was it. keeping yeah. me interested, except she was beautiful. Um, That's a plus. We were working in similar vicinities. Mm. Um, but yeah, there just wasn't a spark to conversation. And I think it's I think it's that that wavelength that matters more than anything. Mm. But wh- what was your question? I mean, I just, I'm trying to figure this shit out too. Cause like I see very little hope for (laughs) any of us because I'm just, I'm just really worried that we're stuck in illusions and lies and just trying to like be roles, like fill a role for each other. That seems like something, I don't know. I I think, I think you need to work through that, dude. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Yes. Call the fuck out. Like that. If you're. Call the fuck out. If you're constantly yes. putting an illusion, call me out. <laughs> I mean, call me out on anything too. But <laughs> but if there's an illusion going on, either that person is is hindering you from being yourself, right? Or you're hindering yourself from being yourself, right? Well, I mean, I think it kind of comes back to um, the in the grocery store, constantly looking for the threat. <laughs> yeah. I think our minds are just attuned uh-huh. to, oh no, what's the problem? What's the thing that's going to hurt me? And I notice myself going through the lists, the red flags, the check, sure. the checking the boxes up. Oh, that's what's wrong with them. That's what's wrong with them. And finding these excuses to leave because that's safer than being caught off guard. Yeah. Falling Work, mad over working heels. Working through it. Right. Or, or, or not even necessarily working through it, but like looking at those things as, um, uh, excuses to, to, to get out, I guess, because like, uh, you know, you would just, you would rather know what's coming. Like, wouldn't you much rather get a warning that you're about to be punched in the gut than just get punched in the gut out of nowhere? Mm. Like you can kind of like tighten your abs, put your hands yeah. here, you know, I feel like that's what we're all doing. We're kind of getting in these defensive positions mm. because if we just really opened up and showed who we were and really connected, we're going to get socked in the gut yeah. and not see it coming. And I think that's what we're all scared of. Yeah, like first date, you're not trying to dump all your trauma, <laughs> you know. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun first date. Have you been on those? Uh, no. Where the girl just like goes the fuck off on her ex or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that quickly shifted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's happened. Yeah. Yeah. No one wants to hear about your fucking ex, at least within <laughs> a handful of days. I mean, on YouTube, they say that's a red flag if the person's yeah. talking about their ex right away. Yeah, don't do that. Don't listen to YouTube, though. But do. <laughs> you're, you're the YouTube queen. I am. <laughs> yeah, relationships are tough, man, because you need to expose shit that no one else gets to see. Yeah. And it's it's a living, breathing thing. Like, relationships, I, I feel like, again, why we get stuck in illusions with it and and seeing a person of a role that they can fit in our lives. Why we get stuck there is because we don't like change. As humans, we're afraid of change. And the truth, if we really want to look at reality square in the face, we are constantly changing. You have a universe and galaxies and dimensions of variables that I will never know about. Mm. And so do I. It's too fucking, it's the Andromeda Milky Way fucking, there's going to be some collisions. There's going to be some hits you, and things are constantly expanding and moving. And I think that's the most terrifying thing for people is they can't grow with each other. They just uh-huh. end up like, you're not what you used to be. I hate you now. Yeah. I mean, I think I already know your answer to this, but do you think you can be married to one person for your entire life? I don't, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, me neither. But at the same time. Wouldn't it be cool to find someone that's willing so connected 
well, just willing to like let shit go, like, yeah. like accept that I'm not going to be the same person in 10 years. I'm not going to be the same years, the same person in 20, 30, 50. Like, how cool would it be if we can just renew our relationship every single time yeah. and, and just be different people, have different relationships every day? Like, how Ooh. cool would it be if we could just be in flow like that? You know what I'm saying? It seems like uh, polyamory is in your future. Ah, is that what that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll be looking for... Multiple baby daddies. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I would want to be married for 50 fucking years. Even, not even necessarily the same woman. But what if she changed think... all the time? Wouldn't that be exciting? Or would that be... Chain... If she changed radically, no. Oh, okay. No, no, this would be gradual. You know how, you know how, imagine yourself. I mean, yeah. How you change, you're you know, gonna change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If she, uh, if she all of a sudden, she wants to like be a, you know, she wants to go to war, you know, <laughs> like she wants to be in the army. I'm like, right, right, right. Like that's, what are you doing? Well, you would judge that? Why would you judge that? Because she's going to be deployed. You're going to be alone for five seconds? Okay, so what? Let her five go. Seconds. You You love her. Let her go. Five to months. <laughs> Dude, just like yeah like big decisions like that that you want to be like in control you, of that you, no not in control but you need you just want to make sure no one's going to do that to you <laughs> no <laughs> so you're putting words in my mouth just like you need to compromise uh -huh. um and you like if you're married every decision should be made together like not everyone but um big decisions big decisions yeah Definitely. Like yeah, that's why communication is so important. Like, would you would you want to marry someone and then um, they just go off and do shit? Yeah, without telling you. Yeah, right, right. Fucking terrible. You know what you're attracted to, yeah, and that you know who you married. Right. So then it's like, okay, our relationship is going to change. We're still going to be friends, close friends. I still care about sure. you, whatever. But see, those labels. Do we even need those anymore? I don't know. What labels? Like, okay, now we're just friends. Like, I hate oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like there, there's love for each other. We share a life together to a certain capacity. As that capacity changes, do we have to put a label on it? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I think people do it uh, either to lock them down. Right. You know, get right. married to make sure they don't run astray. It's a safety thing for sure. Taxes. Uh, that helps. Raising a child as a couple. Which that brings in another complication because yeah. I do think it's very important for a child to have both parents. Yes. So it's like, okay, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can go trans, you can go to the military. I don't care, but it's got to be when they're 18. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you got you to gotta be here. You got to uh -huh. be their dad, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that's why, that's the only time marriage <laughs> makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. For the kids. You need parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we all know, like, uh, being raised by a single parent is tough if you're that kid it does something psychologically to yeah you, for sure yeah if you don't have that role model or something plus that one parent probably has to work their ass off to afford to keep you alive right so you're probably getting slightly neglected yeah just because of the circumstance right yeah yeah i think i think that's why marriages has existed yeah in the first place um but now it's getting to the point where both parents are working Right. Because you have to either the um, the one the one household income isn't enough, right. or the woman went to college and has a degree and feels like they need to work because that's their right. Yeah. Or um, what do you think the ideal situation is? Like, what do you see yourself for yourself? Like, what kind of if I. If I had a kid, I think the ideal situation. Stay at home mom. <laughs> stay at home mom. Yeah, yeah. I would just make sense. Yeah. Just because. But you're, you would be a stay at home dad too. I would love work, to be. I would love to be home. a stay at home dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your work is home. Yeah. So it could go either way for you then. Yeah. I keep like falling into the crack. And, like, <laughs> you're good. Moving. The the crack. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's like. Uh, no, home is where it's at. Cause like daycare is expensive as shit. Yeah. No. So fuck that. And, and plus I want to homeschool my kids because fuck oh yeah? the system. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're an anarchist. I forgot. I am. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> no government. Oh. Uh, mm. <laughs> That's a tough one, man. 
if there was no government, it's like I play that game with myself and it's like, okay, yeah, I don't. But at the same time, there needs to be a little bit. But in, I feel like there should be just in just less areas that there are. Yeah. yeah. Just like in specific areas. Uh huh. Like, um, not everything. Just like a mayor, just one guy. I guess small town buys would be cool. Yeah. But also just like, it, it's tough because I understand why there's. It would be anarchy. In LA, there'd be people murdering each other. No, I get it. Robbing each other. I get why there's laws. I get why government isn't so much stuff. It's to regulate things so that we don't do bad stuff. Yeah. But wouldn't it just be nice if we all just did good stuff? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that just be nice? There's just too many people. Maybe I'm an optimist. Well, people, there's just people that really want to take advantage of anyone who's taken, who's taking advantageable. Right, right, right. You know? And, so there uh, needs to be someone that says, okay, sir, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what laws are for. You're and going to jail for a Ponzi scheme now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love a good Ponzi scheme. Love it. But yeah, like if you were, um, if you were like in the wild west before there were any governments or laws really governing you out here, there's nothing stopping you from shooting a guy and carrying on with your day. Right. No, there needs to be government. <laughs> They need to govern. It's just in certain things, like with, again, I guess, I guess marriage, it only makes sense because of kids. That does make sense. Yeah. And I guess things like the FDA and. You don't need marriage, just a partnership, you know? Yeah, yeah. But there has to be. To buy into the industry, the marriage industry, where you're Mm. spending a fat buck on the wedding. Uh, on a Which ring. I would never fucking do. Yeah. I'd rather put a down payment on a house, you fucking exactly. idiots. I think the fuck? For that's like the one way, day. That's the way <laughs> to go, dude. I Sorry. agree. I'm totally with No judgment for people that spend a bu- bunch of money on wedding, but judgment. I agree. Put that money on a fucking like college account or something, dude. Yeah. Or just get a house. Like everybody's paying rent. Yeah. It's like my neighbors. I love Alex so much. They just got married. They had a huge wedding, all this stuff. They're still paying rent. Like, yeah. they could have put a down payment on a house. I don't understand that. I mean, it's a big down payment in California. I get it. <laughs> still. And uh, they probably enjoy the getting the their appliances fixed by the, the management company. True. Or um, the flexibility that comes with renting. Okay, so you're making great points. Yeah. Stop making so much sense. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I just think... Uh, well, yeah, the real estate thing out here is a disaster. It but, is, yeah. but, but yeah, I would love to be in a partnership with someone that doesn't need to get some fucking papers down in City Hall. Yeah. You know? Do you think there's enough incentive there, though, for then to stick around when there's kids? You know, doesn't there need to be something in place that, you know, there's some kind of reprimanding of like, you know, incentive, don't leave. Because yeah. you're going to have to pay some shit. I mean, if you're not dating a, dating a psychopath, um, then love, that's really it. It's just that chemical that keeps you bonded with people. Okay, but when love isn't there, but the kids are not 18 yet, is that well, that's, lack of love, you're you not going to start sending should, money. If you don't love your kids, then yeah, you're probably a psycho. Oh, not loving your kids. If oh, I you, thought you meant loving the wife. I see, I see. Yeah. Although, you know, some kids are just fucking assholes. Fuck them. You might not love your kid. Exactly. So yeah. then the wife has to get a job then and go pay for it. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, it that's, just, a, that's a tale as old as time. It's tough. I know. It's it's kind of a classic, uh, a cliche where the dad goes and gets some cigarettes and never comes back. I mean, it. I understand why. <laughs> You, you would go get some ciggies and dip out? No, I wouldn't. But, I mean, I understand, like... Well, now, too, it's Why like, marriage is there from that to keep that from happening. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, and then you get alimony if you right. get divorced or uh, child support. But, yeah, back in the day, before before you could really keep track of people, you could just move a fucking town over. And re- and restart. Before we were keeping track of yeah, people, I and love actually it. just restart your life, yeah. which is wild. But. Yeah, how many times have you thought about doing that? Oh, I've done it like five times already. <laughs> 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 love it. Let's get to the bad advice. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go. I get it. Um, let's see what we got. Um, 
Also, I'm seriously reconsidering restarting my podcast after this. Do it, dude. Do you know how many words I've said? Like, it feels so good. <laughs> I know. It's fun doing this shit. Aren't words fun? <laughs> they, they can be. I'm going to a bachelor party tonight, and the groom had mentioned how he doesn't want any strippers at all. A few of us agree and didn't want them also. Lame. One guy mentioned that he wanted to book two ladies for two hours and it was going to cost $900. A few of us told the guy that it isn't a good idea because the groom and the others don't want them. Found out this morning that he went ahead and booked them for tonight. <laughs> I don't know what to do for several reasons. Reason one, nobody but him wants them. Reason two, he's probably going to want everyone to share the cost. And I also don't believe it's fair to ask people to share the cost if we didn't want them and he went away. Went ahead anyways. Any advice would be helpful to coming to a solution of this. This is to, very fucking specific. And to avoid any issues. This is such specific advice. Who the fuck <laughs> needs this advice? Who is this helping? Like this, two people on the entire planet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that's that's the best part. I. <laughs> you is, are a nihilist. I like it. Um, yeah. No fucks. First of all, fuck this guy. Yeah, okay. If no one fucking wants these strippers. Yeah. I hope he's covering them. Mm. But also, like, if he's cov- if he's paying for them, why not? Have a couple strippers. I, I like that viewpoint. <laughs> I like that viewpoint. Um, I'll, I'll throw a little wrench in it and say, <laughs> why even have a bachelor party? Ooh. Do you need that? Mm. Why, why even get married? Oh, I'm just totally like crumbling yeah. this entire premise. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. fine. I'll play along. Um, You're taking away jobs from two beautiful here's women. Here's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I would do. Assuming they're women. I would say in that situation, I would call up the guy and say, hey, look, it was it was out of line. Yeah. All of us didn't <laughs> want this. This is my wedding. This uh-huh. isn't yours. This yeah. is my bachelor party. This is not your place to aside d- and assign the activities of the night. Uh-huh. Um so you would actively This is not what I want. Fi- fix this. Yeah, I would I would go to him and I would say this is really out of line and uh-huh. thank you because deep down subconsciously I really wanted this but never do it again. <laughs> that's okay. what I would do. And that's, then enjoy that's your a night. Good answer. Yeah. I would uh, I would let it happen. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be more fun to watch but you have to let it happen, but make it seem like you were oh, really pissed about oh, it. Like that that was something. my point. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Let it happen, but make it seem like okay. We, we almost lost our fucking friendship, but thank you, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree 100%. Yeah. All right, let's do another one because you nailed that one. <laughs> um, okay. My driving instructor started speaking to me about OnlyFans. Is it okay or should I get a new one? Is this weird? I don't know if I just find it. I just find it a bit. Eh. He started talking about OnlyFans and girls who do it. He told me that he doesn't agree with it. And if these girls will someday want to settle their con- settle down, their content is out there. He also said his wife is an ex-prostitute support worker. Then he spoke about murder documentaries <laughs> and said that the thing that sells it is the sex. And he doesn't like that. This is weird. <laughs> So she's in an Uber and she's <laughs> contemplating if she should a, get a different This is Uber. a teacher. This is a drive driving teacher. Oh shit. So he's she's like locked in this uh situation. Oh, and but she's also holding his fate of if he's gonna continue being an Uber driver or not. Right. AKA driving right. people around and could be a threat to them. Right. Well he's not an Uber driver, he's a driving instructor. Wait, he is or she is? He is. And he's talking about this shit to her while he's teaching her about driving. Got it. I thought it was the other way around. I see. <laughs> I okay. don't even know. I don't know if it's a girl, but it's probably a girl. Okay. Okay. So she's contemplating if she needs to get a different driving instructor. Yeah. Or report him. It's definitely inappropriate. It's definitely sus. <laughs> um, and why is he teaching Uber driving? He's not teaching Uber driving. He's teaching him like getting him a driver's license. Oh, a license. driver's license. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Why did the yeah. why did I think it was Uber? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get taught how to do Uber. <laughs> no. Hopefully you have a license before yeah. you apply to become an Uber driver. Um interesting. I mean it makes a good story. 
Yeah. So that's like a little bit of a hook there uh -huh. to keep him around. If he is he talking about getting just, girls to do OnlyFans for like pimping them on OnlyFans? No, it seems like he's like just pulling a Tate or whatever the fuck his name is. Andrew Tate. No. Yeah. It seems like he's just pulling out his fucking viewpoints about. Uh, oh, not not starting one. No, I misunderstood this entire prompt. <laughs> no, you're good. It's a weird one. It seems like he's just being creepy, and he's probably actively following people on OnlyFans. He's Got just it. projecting mm -hmm. and a shame and a shame around it. But he's talking about it at all, so that's yeah. a major red flag. Right. I don't know. What would you do? Would you keep? I mean, let's assume it's you, not a girl. That's yeah. the student. What would you do as a student? Well, it's definitely more inappropriate if it's a male driver and a and a girl. Right. But if it's you, it's just kind of a cool story, right? <laughs> yeah. Like Dude. this fucking sick fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Sometimes you just meet people in life that just bring up things that they don't need to bring up. And right. it's, it's up to you to roll with it and accept it or... Try to divert the conversation. Either divert the conversation or add to it. I'm more of the add to it kind of okay, guy. Okay, so you encourage the bad behavior. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would probably keep talking to him um, and just shooting the shit. Like, I would never, I would never report a guy and get someone fired unless they were actively harming someone. So you're not a Karen. No, got it. It seems like um, I would bet most people, if she if she reported this to someone, he would get fired. So what was the other thing he did? The OnlyFans thing and what else? He was talking about um, how he doesn't agree with people who do that shit. And he was talking about... <laughs> was, okay, so it's just too much information. He Yeah, he was but just not, spilling not, way like, too much information. It's not like threatening. No. I mean, what was the other thing? Uh, OnlyFans and what else? He was speaking about murder documentaries. Okay, yeah. That, I mean, that starts to get a little weird again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> because you're in the car just alone yeah. with this guy. Yeah, that's weird. And you know when you're in the driving school, they have the ability to steer and brake on their right, side. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden he just flipped the switch and like start driving mm. on his own and like Well, it's usually just like a, a break. there's like a <laughs> There's a, like an automatic seatbelt. Seat claw belt. System. He like presses it and is like <laughs> and you're like stuck. <laughs> Damn, this guy's diabolical. I don't know, that could be his MO, who knows. Yeah. Well, most driver's sides or the passenger sides have the brake. They don't have a steering wheel. So they could break. Oh, is that a thing? Got yeah. it. They can only break. So unless it. you drive in the middle of nowhere. Why do I think it was both? I don't know. That'd be really creepy. Yeah. Oh, you drove here, so I assume you have a license. I do. <laughs> I don't remember school, though. I, it was like 15 when I did that. No. Also, I don't think I had driving school. My mom taught me, and then I just did my license. That was it. What? Yeah. I learned in my mom's, like, Cadillac DeVille. And then just went and got my license and I got a hundred percent on my driver test and the actual Damn. test. You drove like a 69 DeVille? Yes. That's sick. Fucking boat. Yeah. Sick. My brother-in-law has one of those. So fucking sick. Yeah. I love those things. That's awesome. Nostalgic. Yeah. They probably saw you driving there and like, just take the license, dude. I mean, I got a hundred. I got nothing wrong ever. <laughs> I parallel part the whole thing. I failed my first, um, uh. The written part? At the DMV. The written where one? The guy, no, when the guy comes in your car. You failed your drivers? <laughs> How? For the, for the first one. I was parallel parking, and when you hit a curb, it's an immediate fail. Seriously? Uh-huh. Damn. And he told me that, and I went, like, flushed red. I was so Aww. sad and embarrassed. That's really strict. I know. I was Holy like, shit. I I, didn't know I was that. doing pretty solid, too. Yeah. Yeah, and he, uh, he failed me. I had to come back a week later and retake Damn. it. My dad was so pissed at me. He's like, you fucking asshole. Aww. <laughs> that was an honest mistake. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. We fucking do that shit. I just still do that shit sometimes. I, I, could, I could see the disappointment in his face, though. Yeah. Because he took, like, time out of his day to bring me here and yeah. shit. He was like, come on. <laughs> I know, but it's just, I mean, it's part of life. Well, I think a lot of... The, fail shit. I think a lot of DMV drivers fail people on the first try, low-key, because uh. they want them... They want them to go study, mm. you know, just study a little harder or just get better. 
It and just maybe made... they were seeing like questionable things that yeah. weren't marks off, but right. like. Yeah, I was driving like 70 down yeah, the school yeah. zone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> swerving in and out of lanes. Yeah. I was drifting. That makes sense. Yeah. He was like, he's like, this is cool and all, but I have to fail you. <laughs> <laughs> this is super cool, but. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try. Let's try, one find more. one more. This driver instructor, let him be, dude. He's just, he's just chilling. He's just shooting the shit. He's just a little creepy, but <laughs> harmless. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, this is a good one. So me, I'm a 21 year old woman. I was on a first date last night. Oh boy. And <laughs> this guy, who's 24, he spent roughly a thousand dollars on the date. We met online, and honestly, I was only moderately attracted to him physically. Oh, great. I thought he was also a bit too pushy slash clingy. I talked <laughs> I talked up. to my guy friend. He said to give him a chance on the date, and I did. After he texted me on the app nonstop for like a week, I finally decided to meet up. The date itself was not horrible, but I was a little concerned about how much money he was spending. He is in IT, so he's not poor, so I guess he can afford it. The dinner was about $400. We went to a play afterwards, which was about $200. Went on this boat ride with live music and food, which is another $200. And he gave me earrings for $200. I appreciate the attention, the activities, the dinner and the gifts, but I'm torn if I should give him another date. I'm just not totally feeling it. (laughs) Okay, sugar daddy, bring it on. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say, dude. Like, fucking, you don't need to give him anything. If he's giving you all of this, like, nothing, milk it, dude. Okay, I'm I'm lying. That was a joke answer. Because fuck this guy. I hate this guy. He's living in a fucking fairy tale (laughs) fantasy, and he just wants, he's got a hero hero complex. Yeah. And he's just looking for his princess charming, and it's just (laughs) bullshit. Like, honestly... (laughs) Sorry, this is a throw curveball there because like no, part of me is no, like... No, it's true. It doesn't, I don't think she wants a sugar daddy. Part of me is like take the earrings, but another part of me is like this guy is a clingy little squirmy baby that yeah. is trying to buy love. And it's like also he doesn't even know her. So that's not coming yeah. from a place of like right. I want to give these to you. It's mm. like no, no, no. I'm trying to buy your attention yeah. right now. And like that's bullshit. I agree 100%. But I think... Um, Needy and clean and gross. Mm-hmm. However, there are people who love, <laughs> you know, that love language bullshit, like gifts. I know, but he doesn't even know her. He doesn't know that that's her love language or not. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So fuck this yeah, dude. Yeah. He's projecting. He, no, He's I agree. He's hella projecting. If I was... If, I, if this was switched around and <laughs> I was... Going on a date with mm-hmm. a beautiful Mr. Sugar Mama. Yeah. Sugar Mama, sugar me. You know, like <laughs> shower me in the sugar, dude. I'll give you whatever you want for a grand a night. Wow. What if she's like not that attractive though? Cause she said right, she's only right, like right, halfway right, attracted right, right, right. to him. So she's only like, mm, mm. like I don't a know. five. A five. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That'd be tough. I don't know. I could probably struggle through it. <laughs> for the for the money. Oh my god. For t- how long? For how long though? It's how- tough out here. It depends how much money he's dishing out. Yeah. Or she's dishing out. Like if if it is legit a thousand dollars a night. I couldn't do it. I don't care how I could do it. I don't know. Yeah. It'd have it to be a lot more it than It would definitely thousand. eat away your soul and people And I pop- have one, so I'd like to preserve yeah. it. You know, it's different. I know for you. I don't have one, I know. <laughs> I'm still working on that. But I think uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I mean, clearly this is not for her. Mm, mm-hmm. This is not what she's looking I for. I mean, that she's even questioning it. Probably give the earrings back mm-hmm. um, or see if he wants them back. Or just take him to a pawn shop. Pawn shop, that shit. Um, it's free money. Yeah. Free dinner. So, I mean, there's some women who love that shit, dude, who don't expect to pay for anything in general. But see, that's... Uh, we just live in a physical world and I and I fucking hate it because I I wish that that wasn't the case because I have so many amazing friends and like men that you know I think I'd have a great life with that I just don't like them that way and like yeah. how fucking sad is that mm. like I'd be locked down with kids probably right now if physical attraction wasn't a factor mm. how fucking tra- like 
That's tragic. I'm s- yeah. That's a, that's a timeline that I do not want to be in right now. No. Next timeline, please. Next timeline. <laughs> Turn the page on that timeline. But also not the opposite where it's just attraction because that sucks too. Yeah. Well, it's so- Why is it one or the other? Why can't we find- <laughs> There's a lot of variables that, you know, I mean, I ain't having a kid with any, any which bitch, you know? Yeah, I know. Although, you know, this morning I was, I was walking Rosie around a park Mm -hmm. and there was this woman, this is like 8 Mm a.m. There was this woman screaming on the phone, walking across the park, clearly yelling at um, a boyfriend, Mm -hmm. telling, being like, I'm going to break your fucking windows. Like clearly, like, I think he was cheating or she Mm -hmm. caught him in some lie. And then I walked like three blocks down and there was a guy on the phone screaming on his phone. No way. And I think I caught the other half of the conversation. Oh, dude, that's so and fucking he, cool. And he's like, you're a fucking bitch. I don't want anything to do with you. And I'm like, wow, dude. Even if it's not, what a fucking complete yeah, circle. Know, oh, my like, God, I this, love that. This fucking neighborhood, dude. Dude, I love that. But When do you get both sides like that? That's like a but movie. But, but they're kind of made for each other, those people. Yes, that's what I always like those, say. Those, They're perfect for each like other. Like those personalities. Um, they love the drama. Those toxic personalities, they, they always end up with each other. Yeah. And uh, it's just a cycle of yep. disaster. Yeah. But they can't. Either they break up and get back together constantly where they find someone who's, who's just e- like that. E- just like that. Yeah. It's the role I'm telling you about. We're in these illusions. Like we're in these subconscious locked uh-huh. things of what we think we need. Yeah. But it's not always good for us. And so mm-hmm. we have to break past that conditioning or whatever trauma that we've had that we th- we think there's a need that someone can give us. Right. We're just going to be playing. We're just going to be finding people to play the same roles our entire fucking or, lives unless we break out of that. Or you're just inexperienced. You you haven't found. Oh bullshit! No, dude. If, if bullshit. No, if you haven't found someone who actually like can treat you how, like a like a normal human being, and you've only been in this cycle of meeting just trashy people, either you're attracted to that for some reason. I don't know if that's a thing because like my brother, he's not as traumatized as I was. I was way more traumatized. My lucky fucking normal brother that's (laughs) like killing it in life. Right. He found his, his, his person Uh in high school, like their high school sweethearts still together six years. Like he didn't need experience to find that. Like, I literally think it's just like most of us are just trauma locked and we're just in a (laughs) pattern and we have to either wake up from it or we never will. Yeah. yeah, I think there are people too who, yeah, they don't need, they don't, some part of their brain is fine with um, settling on, on the first one. Or they like the, or they found the them. toxicity. Or the, I think or, some people or like I that. Think when you grow, when you grow together from such a young age, your your pathways are very much more aligned because you're your experiences are together from very formative ages. Um, yeah. Like meeting someone for the first time when you're 29 and you've lived a whole life. Mm -hmm. That's tough to align because you both lived completely different lives. Mm -hmm. Um, especially in LA where no one's from here. Very different backgrounds. uh Yeah. And sorry, are you trying to like, and this positively? Cause I'm really making this hard. I'm like disagreeing with everything and being very cynical. So me? I'm yeah, being, like, I'm are you trying cynical. to put, like, a nice little cap on it that's like, oh, it's a nice ending, like, we came to a good resolve with this, and I'm just like, fuck that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do believe there's, um... There's love. I don't... You be, you might believe in a soulmate. I don't believe in soulmates. I think there's just people you can completely vibe with. Put up with or not. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um... And that's on, uh, that's on you two to, to figure that out. But I think, um... There's a laundry list of, of uh, there's an unlimited amount of people that you could end up with if you're willing to take the time to learn and grow with each other. And do you think compromise is involved in that? It could be. Yeah. I don't think every time. Mm. There could be just some magic fucking connection where it's just everything 
is compatible. Right. That's what I was thinking. Like, there's just like a level of compatibility that. But I don't think I think that's rare. Goes as against all odds. Yeah, it is. It is rare. Yeah. Like well, if, good luck to you. <laughs> keep, oh. keep on looking, cause yeah, holy fucking shit, is it tough? <sighs> yeah, just keep. Uh, I think. Uh, I think. I think too. The apps are fun and all, but nothing nothing beats real life. I can't do it anymore. I yeah. ever since the unavailable guy, I just can't. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like I, I I honestly believe that everybody like men at least what I've noticed the pattern is is it's either narcissistic men that just like want to see their own fucking profile, or the unavailable man that's like looking for a codependent little like puppy dog to follow mm -hmm. him around. Yeah. Or it's the desperate clingy motherfucker that will never let go. It's like, those yeah. are the three extremes. That's what I've seen. Those are the only three personalities on Hinge. That's kind of what I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you too. What do you, what do you see with girls? Oh my God, I have to know. Oh, uh, man. Well. What's the trend? Or have you have you been off for too long? I, I've been touching them a little bit lately. Yeah. Um, desperate. <clears throat> Sorry, what? <laughs> desperate. I don't really like them. <laughs> I kind of, I feel like I've hit an age where I just don't really like them that much. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, like. What do you see on there though? A lot of boring people. Yeah, boring. Just boring. Yeah. I'm very like. Slutty uh, types too. I feel like with girls there would be slutty types. No? They're all trying to look like the housewife now? On t Tinder is the, the slutty app. Mm, and mm. that's where you find like the lowest, mm -hmm. the lowest value partners. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because it's just also like the most basic profiles. Mm. I think Hinge is probably the best one. Mm. Bumble too, it's like um, only the woman can initiate conversation. Uh. Like the man, the you can connect, you can match with the girl, but you can't message her at all. Is that like a good thing you think? Well, women are bombarded right. with matches. Men are not. And how do you, that's actually stupid because how do you know if you like someone unless, because I would want a man to engage in like a unique kind of interesting yeah. way, icebreaker or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's why Hinge works so well. Yeah, that's better. Because yeah. then there can be like an interesting, like what makes you stand out if you can't even say anything? Yeah, you just have to be a fucking hunk, of, hunk of a man. Yeah. yeah. That's stupid. I know. I, I actually think that's really Bumble's stupid. never worked for me. Tinder's never worked for me. Hinge is the only thing that's worked. Hmm. Any good dates? But not. I met my last uh, long-term girlfriend from Hinge. Oh. How yeah. long? Like four years. Wow. That's that's pretty yeah. successful, I would say. I know. For a dating app, that's Pretty great. solid. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're... But the thing with the apps is, like, you, you might date someone, but then you are you're always you could be looking for someone a little better it's so That's easy to big thing. so easy to find someone just a little bit better yeah and, it, and jades you are we always gonna be like that because that sounds like society in general right now it's like always uh -huh. more what's more what's more right it's human nature I think. that's a problem i think it's do you think nature. that's what's making everything so terrible yeah it's like we don't go, oh, let's let's make this work. Like I I want there to be challenges and us to grow and whatever. Uh -huh. No, like let's just go to the next easy thing. Right, because you can find a new one immediately. Okay, so we're treating our relationships like TikTok. Yep. <laughs> our attention next. spans, our romantic spans, they're all short, oh, dude. Gosh. Yeah. I hadn't connected that. Uh-huh. That's very interesting. Well, it's like, uh, yeah, you can, you can DM any girl you want. Or... Like, this is what I'm saying. Oh, like, we're fucked. Oh, we're fucked. Like the, <laughs> like, the women, the men are the ones just throwing their, their dicks around, you know? But the women can choose exactly who they want. Mm hmm And um, if you don't have the, yeah, the looks or the personality or the, the texting banter, you're fucked. And for a guy or a girl? For a guy. Mm-hmm, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I I I miss the days of uh, of just hitting on people in person, and now Why it's like people. Why don't you go do that? Can you do that at bars? Like, is yeah, that yeah, you can. No, totally. I, Are there I, any like where do you find girls now? Because like I've been working on this. Where do I find guys? I don't fucking know. I go to parks. 
there's a cute, a cute guy here and there. Yeah, but like, yeah. how do you talk to them? You can't. Like, you just how need to, do you do that? Well, people are so scared to just cold approach. Yeah. So what do you do? Where do you, are there places that you can cold approach girls? I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, that's fucking scary as fuck. I don't want to do that. <laughs> also, like, or God forbid, um, you're too forward and then you get me too immediately. <laughs> well, it's too loud at these places too. You yeah, have to yeah. literally be in their face and that's already quite violating and then like right. screaming at them. Yeah. Most places when it's loud like that, it doesn't work. But then if it's quiet, it's more awkward because uh -huh. it's like, oh, this is a quiet place where you're to yourself, a cafe or a park. Like, yeah, I, it's just a matter of also like as a woman, men would love for a woman to approach them. Because it's always... It's oh, wait, this is great intel. Keep going. Because it's always on a man, uh, by and large, to make the first move. Because we like that. We like a... We, we want to make sure you're not spineless. Yeah. Well, we... But... Well, from a man's perspective... I understand. I would love the confidence from a woman yeah. who knows what they want, has... That's a great point. Has the... the yeah, just the, that spine mm -hmm. to to approach you. Interesting. Especially like um, if you're coming, men men don't get compliments very often. They're very, very, very like they hold on to compliments like to the grave. Okay, well now this sounds this sounds a little codependency. I don't know if I want to give you a compliment straight well, out the gate. Well, if you come if you come in hot, you know some guys. What, what, if, what if I come in hot but with a question? Yeah. What if it's like. Hey, so I heard that there's cool drink somewhere. Do you know where that is? Like, uh -huh. what if I what if I just that's opened a, up the stage no, that, like that's that? That's a great open opening line. Yeah. And uh, because then it's not like, oh, I'm hitting on you, but it, it does give you but, opportunity to talk to me now. Yeah, I think that's a good neutral approach. But men also need hints, dude. We're stupid. We don't know. Well, I think we you're don't also know if, scared we don't know, that we're we like not into you that way or something too. Well, yeah, we don't know if. Are you hitting on me right now or are you just asking me for a tip? Right, 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 you know? right, right, right. <laughs> like we need, we need something so that you uh, don't in our feel faces. weird. Yeah. We don't work in riddles. Right, right, right. We do. Yeah. We you, love a good riddle. You guys are in your heads. Yeah. We're like in our balls <laughs> and, and chest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dude, yeah, just be more forward as a woman. That's I like what that. I, that's that's what great I would advice. Say. Yeah. This is not bad advice at all. Because men, dude, I'm, I think men are so scared of making a woman uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I guess. Especially it. when they see all their favorite uh, men, uh, artists, and actors get like outed on TikTok by some girl. You who, have a manly mic too. A what? A manly mic? Because I see you have the. No, no, oh, no. Shit. Yeah. Manlies are fucking. They're expensive, those mice. I want to get one. But, but yeah, dude, if you're looking for, for a dude, just fucking hit on him. Don't, don't play riddles with him. Yeah. I'm Dr. Seuss up in this bitch. <laughs> I'm all about the rhyming riddle. Well, the thing, too, with the hinge bullshit, too, it's like you I'm need kidding. some special pickup line or something, you know? Yeah, I know. It's like that. No one wants it. For me, no it's just, it. I think the biggest hurdle for me is knowing if there's chemistry is a tough thing because the kind of chemistry that I know I need in a relationship takes time to develop or discover. Yeah. And it's hard for me. It's like, how hard do I want to hit on someone? And they think that I like them that way, mm -hmm. but I'm not ready for what they think I want yet. And so that's why I, I, I tend to take a more subtle approach and it's like, Hey, I think I like you, but can we just be friends for a while so I can make sure because mm -hmm. I don't know. No, don't do that. I know, but that's where I end up being because otherwise then I get pigeon held as, oh, this girl wants me and he makes all these sexual moves that I'm not fucking ready for. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I I think um, I don't like being... Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to, to establish a friendship, like a, like a hardcore friendship for a long time. Okay, what about for like five dates? Five dates. Five? Just friends. What? Five dates as friends? Yeah, just five hangouts. Hmm. Would that be a short enough period of time for you to not feel friend zoned, but also a long enough period of time for me to see if I actually like you that way? Would that be a reasonable 
mm. amount of time. Because I think that's what girls want. We just want to know that you're not in it just for the sex. Because yeah. when it starts creeping into sex, only three or four dates in, it starts to feel that way. Because then every time from that point, once you pop that cherry, no pun intended, once you break that barrier, you're you're going to be having sex every time probably after that. Yeah. Once you do that, it's right. like it becomes a thing. Right. And then we start to just feel used that like, oh, you just want us mm. for sex. So that's why I feel like there needs to be some compromise of like, can we trust you and get to know you as a person first before that? Because mm -hmm. otherwise we start feeling like used, you know? No, totally. Um, yeah. I'm, you think that's I, I guess that's a good approach. I don't know. I feel and like, what if I just told them that? I'm also that of a, uh, I'm kind of of a, a love language that's more like uh, touchy. <laughs> Yeah, you know exactly our fear, though. Okay, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. The difference we can't tell until we know you. No, I got you. I mean, I, I don't want to like first date. You know, just be banging right off the bat. Okay, but what about second or third? Yeah, I think I think that's fair, especially <laughs> if, especially if you're talking between dates. I know, know. but what, what I'm trying to let you know as a woman is <laughs> we need to establish yeah. trust over time. No, totally. And even just five dates is enough time for us yeah. to, and, and don't, not as a game to like do that and like uh -huh. fake it or trust, but just like, we want to know who you are first right. before the sex. Yeah. And I think that's a reasonable ask. I think that's fair. And I think that's, um. Good advice. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's decent advice. <laughs> Gotta uh, change the name to decent advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I think I think there's just some guys that'll lose interest after three dates and be like, all right, she's not putting out, I'm done. Damn. Yeah. See, but then we know. Okay, yeah. good. Glad yeah. we weeded you'll, you out. You'll weed those guys out. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that is good. It's a advice. good litmus test. It's good advice. Okay. Podcast name change. That's <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a solid cap off. That is Nova, a beautiful cap. Because I know you got places to be. Do you have any Anything you want to promote? Anything cool shit coming out that you're working on? I mean, I'm really cool. Yeah. So yeah, what's your IG? Cool shit to what's, follow, your, what's your handles? The cool shit to follow is me. Instagram, at Shinova Weirdo. I make music. I'm a producer. Um, I'm, I'm a millennial trying to be relevant. So I put out reels and TikToks that are funny in regards to music production and being a creative artist. Yeah. Um, and I put out music and I put out an album with videos on YouTube. So youtube.com slash Unova and I don't know, Instagram and YouTube are really the only ones yeah. I care about. Hell yeah. I mean, you're badass. You're making badass shit. Um, I might start a podcast again. I might start uh, my boss pod again. Yeah. So if you want no to go zoom to audio. anchor dot FM slash <laughs> boss pod, I might be starting that again. If not, you can watch the reruns. That's it. Sweet dude, thank you for coming out. She, she knows.